All right, peoples, let's fucking set up this stream. I need to find myself on myself. All right. Bend this back so you guys can see me. So that goes. Better? More better? I gotta tilt the damn thing back. I gotta adjust. Hang on. Volume down. You got this crap set up. Alright, guys, let me tilt you back. Alright. That goddamn camera just fall down? No? What's up, Billy Crow? Hello? Top in the way. I ain't moving some crap around, guys. Uh, well, this would be easier to see. Yeah, I gotta tilt that camera some more. Uh, all right, people. Hello, Patty. How are you? Oh, I mean, we just got out of a freaking heat wave, man. It's been freaking exhausting. We got Vic's trailer out in front of the damn house. It's crazy. St. John, holy cow, my phone just made noise, letting me know that you was on, that's cool. What's up, Ray? And Billy's saying, so what stuff are y'all going to chat about? M8C, guys, we lived through it. What a hell of a freaking time me and Vic had going up there. Oh my god, it was crazy. I spent all day unpacking and trying to rearrange stuff in the garage and clean up. The stuff I didn't sell, trying to repackage that and... Uh, get it all together, but oh man, it's crazy. Let me see if I can scoot this a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm actually on a little bit early. That's pretty uh, crazy for once. I'm about 10 minutes early. Day team. Ray wants to hear all about that. Well, it was pretty crazy. So, if you guys knew we were going to M8C, I hadn't done any like. Um, tutorials or anything in a while, you know, we've just been so damn busy with all the madness leading up to MHC and trying to finish stuff and uh, get stuff done. And uh, so Vic comes up here because he's got a pass within a mile of my house to get to MHC. So we throw my stuff on the trailer. Uh, it's Thursday, yeah, Thursday night. So we load in Friday morning first thing. And uh, we get like 30 minutes out from Rosemont and Vic's turbo blows on his diesel, on his dually. Big boom, he says. He loses power, loses boost, goes over to the side of the road. I see him pull over because I'm leading and he's following behind. I'm like, oh shit, what are we doing, man? So I call Vic. He's like, yeah, I heard a big boom. I lost my boost. He goes, something's broke. And I'm like, oh crap. So I pull over. He kind of limps up to me. He gets out, looks at it, can't find anything obvious. But the truck's loud as hell, so obviously there's a broken pipe or turbo pipe or exhaust pipe or something like that. So it's like, oh, uh, so I sit on the side of the highway. I think it was like a 94, I think it was. So uh, I said, well, let's try and make it all legal, stay in the outside two lanes, and see if we can lift the truck up there and, and uh, see what we do. So we got it up there. We got to the hotel about midnight. We stayed up at the Embassy Suites. And we actually made it into town. I think we checked in about midnight and probably passed out about 1 o'clock <laughs> to get up at uh, 7 to get our ass across the street to convention center to load in. So it was, uh, it was nuts. What's up, Berlina? Billy's asking, do you sell anything? Yes, I do, Billy. Uh, MHC was really like me and Vic's first big show. I've been to another smaller show out by me that I've been to that. Uh, it was pretty cool. But uh, overall, I think I did pretty good, man. I sold a little bit of everything. Uh, Vic sold the hell out of some eyeballs, that's for sure. See, what's John saying? John Lamar, I'm thinking about making a 13 foot skeleton out of some half inch, inch and a quarter inch rebar. Any ideas on how to cover it? I would not use rebar, John. Rebar is heavy, and then if you gotta store it, uh, you could weld it together unless you're gonna keep them up like Burning Man style year round. But uh, I would use PVC, and I would skin them with pool noodles and just sheet plastic like painter's tarps, man. That's the easiest way to paint it because paint will stick to plastic. Um, over time, it'll wanna rub off. But uh, you could easily do that and uh, 
He'll make him 13, 15, 20 feet tall. He'd be lightweight, and you could take him down in sections to store him too, like behind your garage, whatever. Uh, rebar, rebar's heavy. I would definitely leave the bottom of the tubes open for his legs and rebar into the ground to stand him on. Because a lot of people have those 12-foot skeletons, they just face dive right into the uh, yard when they don't put the little tie straps on, the, the uh, anchor straps. And I guess the faces just shatter on those things. So uh, I don't have one yet, so I don't think I'll be going anything too crazy too far. Um, I know a lot of the 12-foot skeletons are in stock. Everybody's messaging me. He's like, hey, cobwebs, you know, 12-footers run 12-footers in. To me, it's almost to the point where it's like everybody has them. Like, it's not really cool anymore to, to, to have a 12-footer. And if I had one, I would just cut it up and change it anyways. I would probably make it a frost giant, so. Berlin just got home from a plumbing job. Hot day. Had to run an excavator most of the day. Oh, wow, Berlin, you run an excavator? Like a backhoe or a John Deere or a front-end loader or big stuff? My former boss has got a... Big old Komatsu uh, loader, and then he's got a, I think it's a John Deere uh, backhoe, I think. So I'm really saying, how did your event go a couple weeks ago? M8C, I think it was. M8C was last weekend, so we're about five days out. Uh, show ended on Sunday. Oh, I see you again, mother. You're across the room from me. I can't see you. Uh, my dead mother is a... Uh, uh, ding me. Um, so M8C was last Sunday. We tore down 3 o'clock. Uh, one of the things that you should know about M8C, so let's say you're going to vend there, right? You sign your contract, you're a vendor there. Uh, show is from 10 to 3 o'clock on Sunday. If you tear down your booth early, let's say you sell out Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, like noon, and you tear your booth down, there is a $500 penalty for the next uh, HHA show event that you attend and you vend at. They will knock you and add $500 to your booth for tearing down early. So when you sign up to vend, you got to be there, you got to vend. So you're on, under contract to be there till 3 o'clock uh, closing. So I think that's pretty funny. So like last year uh, at MHC in Milwaukee, Ghost Ride tore down Sunday morning and I saw the uh, show uh, Rich was over the promoter was talking to him. So I'm sure he got hammered for 500 bucks at Transworld, but uh, yeah, it's kind of pretty funny, like being a first-time vendor, or something like learning the ropes, and you know our vendor buddies like uh, Rob at Resurrect Costumes and uh, David at uh, Monsters Alive and Chad Smith at Unsub Mast. Uh, you know, it's they've all been there before. And this is me and Vic's first time, our first outing to MHC. So uh, it's pretty cool when you get the contracts, you're reading the stuff like, oh man, this is pretty heavy, you know. So you actually got to. Sign your life away a little bit, and there's definitely some rules and stuff that you got to uh, follow when you're uh, gonna bend. So it's pretty cool, though. What's up, Jurak? Just got my first notification ever for my channel. Wow, really? I know I've heard that from other people. Like they say, oh man, and it happens to me too. I don't get notifications on my phone, I don't get the dings. Um, sometimes I've heard that if you unsubscribe, then resubscribe, and then hit the bell for all notifications. It sort of like resets YouTube for a channel. So if you guys were like subscribed to somebody, you're like, man, you know, I haven't I mean, seen what they've been doing for like a month. And you check on them, they had a video like a week ago or something. Do that. Unsubscribe, then resubscribe, and then uh, hit the bell for all the, the notifications. And that should catch you up to uh, any channels you're watching or anybody you guys sub to. Uh, so you get notifications again. But then sometimes there's times I've done that and still nothing. It's it just whatever YouTube's feeling like that day. Sometimes they get a wild hair up his ass and. You don't get any notifications unless it's just something with channel or something. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. I don't, you know, how, how they catch that or how they do that. But usually by unsubscribing, subscribing, and hitting the bell again, usually that'll catch up and give you notifications for uh, anybody you watch. What's up, cat? Yeah, cat saying I think it's a liability issue. Tearing down would create hazards for folks. I can see if you've got a like a real tall facade, if you had an eight foot wooden facade that's 32 feet long, yeah, you definitely want to be tearing that down in the middle of a show. But uh, I think it's more like, you know, you signed up to be there, so be there. It's like you don't leave work at, at you know, on a Friday at noon and say, ah, screw it, I'm going home. You still get in trouble by the boss. So I think it's one of those deals. Um, you're supposed to be there. You're there for the show. You're there for the public. You were put onto a roster, so the public announced. It was announced to the public, so everybody knows you're going to be there. So it's your duty. You got to be there. But yeah, turn down in front of folks. I wouldn't want to do that either. I mean, that'd be like a mess, especially when you got a convention center full of people. Not a good look for your company. Willing to stand up. Had to start learning how to run heavy machinery since opened my plumbing business. I actually enjoy it. 
You know, Berlina, heavy machinery is fun, man. I've driven a loader before. I play with the backhoe a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's a job I want to be in full time because it kind of it shakes you around. It's hard on your guts. But uh, it's definitely fun playing with the big boy toys, man. Especially when you know that some of those things are like $85,000, $100,000. You know, my uh, former boss who I run a building from, he, you know, he bought an $85,000 bulldozer. You know, his dump trucks were a hundred and a quarter and his excavator that he's had for a bunch of years was like originally a quarter million dollars brand new. So you can have some money locked up in those machines and when they break, you're talking thousands for somebody to come out and put like a, a wheel track back on your dozer or something like that. It's pretty crazy how that stuff works. Hello, third world, brother is. You just drop in and say hi, Keith. Got a big day with Zodi's football. Hope you got some rest. I'm working on it as, man. My eyelids were heavy as hell for like three days after home, coming home from MHC. Uh, I'm still kind of tired. I feel like, you know, MHC just kicked my ass, man. Uh, everything leading up to it. Um, and then now just Joel's trying to start out slowly and, you know, go back out there, tinker, clean up my mess, and start putting stuff back where it goes and kind of rearranging everything. But yeah, man, hopefully Zodi's killing it, man. And I want to see that boy start doing some videos for his uh, Stan Winston school and show us what he's doing and, you know, Put some stuff up on, on Facebook and stuff. I want to see what those classes are like. I just turned notifications off. I should not be getting dinged. Son of a bitch. Stupid phone. Sunburn. Oh, yeah, because you're in those little, uh, those little cabs. They make shades for them, and you can buy smoked glass, uh, smoke safety glass. If something hits up against it, it shatters in the little cubes. I would look into that or get them tinted, Berlina. Because if you're gonna be in the sun all day, like it's like 90 degrees, you're basically sitting in a greenhouse, you know, and the uh, sun comes through the UV rays, they're gonna multiply inside a little cab of like an excavator or something like that. So I would get somebody out there to tint them windows, man. That might help with mirror tint. Uh, so it looks mirror on the outside, but on the inside, it kind of bounces off the sun rays, so it'll probably keep you cooler in there. So I would look into like mirror tint for your excavator, at least for your, your side shields, because your fronts, I don't know if that's technically illegal, but if you're off-road, I don't know if DOT would hit you for that or not. Let's see. Drex says, with Halloween coming, trying to decide what to buy, gas, food, or more props. I'm going with props. <laughs> What's up, Brother Vic? You know, I think that was definitely a concern this year. So, you know, there's a big convention going on in MHC. Uh, diesel was 579 a gallon. Uh, gas was 535 uh, it's insane what people had to put up with this year uh, due to our gas crisis or, you know, the overseas BS with Russia or uh, the pipeline closing. We just shut off all our gas to ourselves, and now we go back to buying it from everybody else. Um, so that's a smart move, you know. Uh, we got all the gas in the world. We just buy everybody else's so that our price drives up to over $5 a gallon, which has never happened uh, ever. So what a time to be living through right now. And then going to conventions or, you know, trying to put food on the table or keep your car on the road to go to gas. So most people, is it really worth going to work if all your money is going into your gas tank? Probably not. You're probably better off staying home, working from home, or uh, get a job closer to home. What are you going to do? It sucks. It's got to change. Cat says, you're also suffering from an extended adrenaline rush that lasted for weeks. It's going to take a bit longer for your brain to return to normal. You know, I definitely feel it. It's like, man, the madness and sanity of leading up to this. You know, me and Vic going back and forth trying to make sure we got all our stuff done and got our shit together and we got everything boxed up and ready to go and trying to figure out prices on everything and make sure we get there and figure out, okay, this is sub day. We're going to be ready by the next day. We got to get the facade up. We got to figure out when how we're going to eat, when we're going to sleep. Um, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad it's over. Uh, hopefully I've got a couple months to recoup and then uh, we're gonna start working on some stuff for next year uh, I've got some product left. So that's great. People have been hitting me up when I got home. Hey, you still got this You still got this so I can load up my Etsy store with a bunch of crap uh, that I got and then uh, People have been hit me up on the side and messenger like hey, you know, I still want this send me this so I could get a chance to get out there so send me this so Hey, shut up Badger. So I'm still kind of working on getting stuff out the door for uh, friends and subs and stuff like that. So Oh my god, Dave's alive. Dave, you're alive. You're uh, awake for once. Yep, Berlin, it was Vic's truck, man. 30 minutes from the hotel. Turbo blue. So uh, we got it limped home Sunday, which is good. So Vic stayed with me for a couple days, found a shop to get the truck in to get fixed. But it's going to be hell of expensive, man. Oh my god. Yeah. Like 
Chat. There we go. Yeah, I think we did pretty good for our first show. We had a couple little snafus. Um, but overall, it was great, man. Uh, we definitely want to go back next year. Uh, Vic sold a hell of a lot of eyeballs, man. I sold all my tiki's that I made on my cannibal barbecue video. I took most of those up there, except for the two that, um, or I, I, there was three I didn't take. Uh, two for one, one I sold at the other show. And I took nine up there and I sold eight of them. So I got one little tiki left. And then I still got all my demon ones. None of those sold. I sold some sconces, the skull sconces you guys saw me make with the um, uh, little tea lights on the jaws. I sold some gargoyle shelves. I sold some locks. I uh, sold magnets, of course. Um, hell, I'm trying to think of what all the hell I make. I sold some of my bolt heads that I make. Um, man, I don't really... Oh, my cyclopses. So I took five up there. I had three on poles, and I had two that were heads only in case somebody wanted to buy them and then like make a body for it. So I sold two of the guys on poles and one of them on, uh, it was just a head only to uh, Ed Clark. So thank you, Ed. Um, so I've got two left. I've got one on a spear left and I've got one, the one red one, that's the Oni inspired one. So uh, moved some Cyclops heads, that was pretty great. Uh, it was definitely like a, a big show. Saturday, man, they, let the public in, and boom, it was just busy, busy, busy all day. You know, you're afraid to get away from your booth. Like, you want to go see your friends and run around and play, but you can't in case people got, like, questions. So, kind of trading off. If somebody sneaks out of the booth to go run, um, get April to cover it or Vic to cover it. So, it was just, Saturday was crazy. Most of Sunday was crazy, too, until, like, the later half of the show. So, it was a, it was a big show. I heard people saying, oh, you know, well, uh, it was a small show. It was disappointing. It was not disappointing, man. There was a lot of stuff there. Um, from my walkthrough, I even missed booths, and I was there for an hour walking around. Um, there was a lot of stuff I didn't get to see. There was a lot of stuff I didn't get to shop at, which kind of sucked. It's crazy being on the vending side versus just the attending side. Because you can go, go root around in somebody's booth and spend 20, 30, 40 minutes or looking at all their stuff and pick out what you want to buy. But this time, you know, 30, 40 minutes, that's a lifetime in being out of your booth. So that's kind of crazy. So that's kind of hard to hard to manage <laughs> since me and Vicar used to just going crazy and running around you know being wherever the hell you want to go and just go booth hopping and stuff and then bounce back and see people later so that part's pretty crazy um but still worth it was a great show man they put on a great show there was a lot of people there and and thanks to Rich and Jen man they gave us like a primo spot we were literally up against the wall and right in front of us was Ghost Ride and Distortion so we could not have had a better spot in the whole building so hopefully we get that same spot next year but uh, it was awesome, man. Cat says, actually taking pics and listing will help you heal your sort of routine, but work productive. I can't be productive. Cat, I'm all over the damn place. I'm trying to do 20 things at one time all the time. Um, hopefully tomorrow I can chill, get a bunch of pictures of the stuff that uh, I'm going to list on Etsy. So I see people, mostly some people can just see a majority of the stuff I make. Um, put it all in one place. So... Hopefully tomorrow I'll be working on that, but I'm still having that issue on Etsy where it's saying like shipping profiles is invalid. It's free shipping. How the hell is it invalid? So Etsy's already pissing me off and I messaged the people and I really never didn't hear anything back or I talked to some lady and she's like, send me a screenshot. So I send her a screenshot and I still hear nothing back. So if I go to list stuff and uh, it's saying shipping thing is invalid, I'm going to close that damn store. I'm going to have to go right to the internet because uh, I don't think I'm going to get any help with their little hotline. You got to try and contact them and have somebody call you and email i just i don't want to deal with it man I, it's just it's a pain in the ass i got free shipping what the hell are they saying how is the shipping how is it inv invalid it's free shipping it's free shipping so what's up jamie thank you i see she says our booth looked very great very pro pro i doubt it we had shits stuff everywhere just trying to fill up tables i trash all over the tables you know poor Vic didn't have no room i was hoarding space just trying to pack put as much stuff on table for people to look at when they're coming through you know um we're gonna make some tweaks for next year we had our booth kind of kicked out i thought man if we kicked our booth in at the ends we could use that little inside space um just little stuff we should have got our banners up uh, Vic couldn't have time to get a banner he couldn't get all this printing uh, stuff done in time. My banner was there. There was just no space for it to put up on the wall. So we're gonna we're gonna do some tweaks for next year. So we both have banners way up high for everybody to see across the room. 
Uh, we're going to try and use our full booth footprint. Uh, we also did not know that, so we had a lot of black light stuff this year. My tiki's were, uh, my demon tiki's were black light. Some of my sconces were black light, um, like this guy. So this guy was black light, and we had little corners over the roofs, and we stuck like our my big catacomb sconces in there. Um, so you could see that we had stuff that was black light. And then like the first day, uh, Saturday when the show opened, probably like, I don't know, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, something like that, these big-ass overhead can lights kicked on and uh, lit up the whole damn building. We were like, oh, man, that like sapped our, our, our black light. It was, so, it was so bright. So we're going to have to figure out something like that for next year. But I thought, oh, shit, we weren't even expecting that. We thought we got in there. That's how the show was going to look. And uh, they kicked them big cam lights on, and they totally, like, drowned it out our black light stuff. So the people who came by, we had so much black stuff. They're like, my little chest is black light. Some of the sconces were black light. The tiki's, uh, mixed little skulls and stuff. We had a bunch of black light stuff that you really couldn't tell because it was so... They kicked the big monster cam lights out. It was so bright overhead, like, oh, man. So we tried stuff and putting stuff back in the corner, rearranging stuff so you could see it, and then adjusting the black lights. Ezekiel says the most horrific prop I saw at MHC was them leftover undies. That was at my house, Ezekiel. Oh my God. <laughs> he left them right on Savage's floor. Blowed out in the Dickel region. We just found it after Vic went home uh, the next day. <laughs> Cat says, will you keep the Sasha Cohen mankini table covers? Hell yeah, Cat. Um... I used yellow at my at the last show I vended at, and man, people did not miss those. So looking at like the M8C videos, you can see all the spandex uh, 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 table covers like in the background from like a mile away. So you're goddamn right, I'm going right back to them yellow table covers. Although I want to have some printed that says like uh, the Cobbler was a Candlesticks logo on them. Uh, I've seen those, and Vic had mentioned that. So we're gonna try and get Vic some blue table covers and then yellow for mine. Because people were picking up stuff like, hey, you know, I want to buy this. And they had, we had to figure out whose it was. It was a Vic's, it was a mine. And Vic was out of the booth. I had to go over there and make change for him. Um, so we're going to try and divide the booth another day. Get better next year. We're going to get Vic some spandex mankini covers for his tables. <laughs> Maybe some Monster Misfits logos on there. Uh, we talked about it when we got back to my house after limping the truck here. Uh, so we got a pretty good plan for next year, man. I, I think it's going to shock some people. we got a couple of uh, tricks up our sleeve. But yeah, we're going to do some tweaks to try and, you know, that was our first big show. We didn't really know what to expect. We were just kind of in there like blithering idiots, just like, okay, slap it up, get it ready. We got to go. We got to go. You know, people are coming. So it was a little willy-nilly really for us, but uh, we worked it out. Dark Back for Live says, I'm trying to find your Etsy store. What is the name? Uh, if you look under any of my window, um, videos, Dark Back, in the description, I actually leave a link to it. It's Cobwebs and the letter N candlesticks because my name was too damn long for Etsy. Uh, but if you look in any of my videos in the description, there should be a link to it, uh, down. I put it in almost every video description in case somebody wants to go look at whatever crap I put on Etsy. But it's cobwebs, the letter N, candlesticks, all one word. And you'll see my little icon pop up when you search on Etsy, so that's me. That's right, Brian, the undies. Leftovers, blowed out in the dickel region. Hello again, Jamie. I hear you, brother. Cat says, put your names everywhere. Yeah, an N, letter N. Um, that's true, you know, uh, for anybody who's attending Fear Expo, uh, Doug has them like Thursday night, uh, they're either like a vendor spotlight or they're a, um, a vending class. And even though I'm not vending at Fear Expo, uh, Vic's going to vend there this year, the coming year in March, it's coming up. Um, I liked a lot of what he had to say, man. Uh, there was a lot of good insights, like your vault logo and your your company name was supposed to be in your booth seven times. Uh, he said seven times, anything less, people will forget it when they walk out. So I was like, man, seven times, like, wow, really? Like, that's crazy. So you're going to put your name on your products, your T-shirts, your aprons, your table covers, your business cards, your stickers, your banner, uh, everything. So uh, we're going to get more into that next year. Uh, in fact, I did have Quinn before he went. If you got, you guys know, come on, Quinn over at uh, Monsters Alive. Uh, since he has a sign shop, I liked his flyer, so I went and had him make me up some flyers. So these were all over the booth. People could take one when they got out of there. Nice big five by seven splash card. 
says, you know, hey, I make monster magnets and resin keychains and all that stuff. So uh, it's got my little website down there and stuff. So thank you, Quinn. Man, these work great. Uh, every time I sold something, whatever, April put a card in the bag or people could come by and grab a card off the table if they were stopping by. Um, so that was awesome. So I got a bunch of these to put in with like Etsy orders and stuff so people can find all my crap wherever it's at, you know. Um, so every time I send something out for somebody when they buy something or whatever, or if I send something out for something, I'm going to go ahead and send a card with it so everybody can find where all, all my crap's at because sometimes I have a hard time remembering. Vic says, that's because I have, I have pack and monster. <laughs> yeah. Or you just pinch it too much. You pinched holes in them. Cat says, that's why we have tons of business cards and slide them in every bag, every hand, everywhere. Once folks get home, they won't remember who did what. They need your card. That's true. I mean, there's been a lot of times, like, when we went to Trans World, uh, April saw a dress there and uh, it tried it on, or tried it on, and she's like, okay, I'll think about it. If they didn't have her size, so we'll try this back on our website, we'll restock it, and we'll probably have your size. Either for whatever reason, we didn't get a card, or it's in my bag of all my uh, Trans World stuff. Could not find a goddamn name of that business. We went back, and I tried to freeze the video to see their name, but their stuff was so tall in their booth, it was blocking their little uh, booth placard, and I thought, shit, man, I said, I don't know, I can't, for, I've watched other trans world videos trying to see that booth, and I could not see their damn name on their placard. So we go to MHC, and we set up, they are right next to us. It's T3 Productions, and T3, T3 Entertainment and Productions, they were right next to us, like, I'll be a son of a bitch. We could not find them after trans world, and the MHC, they set up right next to us, man, like a 30, 40 foot booth, it was crazy, like, oh, here they are, you know. So that was pretty cool. Berlina says, you're going to be at the Pensacola event. Berlina, I doubt it, man. Uh, when that happens, I'm going to try and be a sponsor. Uh, get my name on the board up there. Um, it's just going to be hard because uh, Savage is still in school. Uh, it's in Florida. Uh, I just don't think I can get away to run down there and set up shop or probably not even attend because Savage is still in school. So... I, I doubt I'm going to be there, but I'm most definitely going to be a sponsor for uh, Michael and James since they're setting the whole thing up to help get this thing off the ground. So maybe next year if I can work some things out. It's just my schedule is crazy, man. With, with working two jobs, it's it's insane. Trying to do this show, trying to do MHC, it was insane. And, and then the, the last minute rush, trying to get everything done and boxed up. And should I take this? Should I make this? Uh, it was just ape shit, man. The, the, the whole, since trans world, I've had my head so far up my ass at this show trying to get everything ready and done and flyers and not to forget stuff and order stuff that i'm gonna need for the show it's been crazy man like my head's like a freaking grenade so i'm really looking forward to like decompressing and uh think some some quiet time to think about uh next year mhc uh the cool thing about mhc was uh the other vendors so like uh, brian blair from pumpkin cult came up and uh, he was like hey guys how's your show going you know and I, I love, you guys know I love Pumpkin Pulp. Love me some Pumpkin Pulp. I've got a handful of their masks, and I always go see them at the shows. Um, he said, you got to be consistent. He said, when they first started out, uh, they make masks and swap sticks and the Forevermore dolls. And he was like, be consistent. He's like, uh, you know, you're going to be at a show, be at the show every year so people know you're coming. They expect you to bring your stuff. He said, they did four or five years at MHC before they jumped to Trans World. Uh, so that's kind of me and Vic's plan. We're hoping to do a couple years, be consistent MHC, uh, and then jump to Trans World. So I really like that advice. That was great. Um, you know, Alan stopped by the booth, got to see Alan, uh, got to talk to Ed. You know, Ed's, you know, the pinnacle of who you want to be if you're vending for Halloween stuff. Be like Ed. Ed is, you know, he's the most gracious guy. He talks to everybody like, you know, you're a neighbor. Um, you know, ever, everybody was great. I mean, all our vending buddies, Rob, O'Brien, at uh, Resurrect, you know, they come by and check us. Quinn was checking us uh, Friday night after he was getting ready to go, and he was set up. So um, Chad came by, checked on us, made sure everything was cool, asked how the show was going. So it was great to have friends there to kind of bounce ideas off or to say, hey, you know, what are you guys doing back there? Are you doing good? You know, what, you, what have you seen? Um, that's really, like, the best part of MHC and meeting people, man, like, Having people from the Cobwebs group come up, like I got to meet Barb Keith, me and Vic got to meet Frady, uh, Eric Weber stopped by, he came out, um, got to see Chad and Rob O'Brien and Quinn and all our vendor buddies and Beth and Lanny at Drop Dead Design Studios. They were right next to us on the other side, so we got to hang out with them for breakfast. Um, it, it was just cool to meet and see everybody and see new faces. Kristen Gray from uh, Chicago Haunt Club, 
Uh, it was awesome. We met other Australians there. These Aussies came and they had bought some stuff from us and they're like really close to Ezekiel. So they're going to start a convention in Australia, which is awesome. So we're like, oh, you got to know Ezekiel. You got to know Ezekiel. So we went on Facebook. We were trying to get them to message Ezekiel and say, hey, we're fellow Aussies. We just met your buddies here in Chicago. So that was amazing. Totally cool. It was just great to meet people, man, and, and, and see people that you interact with online. They can buy your booth and they can, you know, all the sh pictures and stuff of the shit you show on Facebook that you're making. You know, people don't know. People actually thought my Cyclops heads were little, like little Nightmare Maker skulls. I was like, hell no, dude, they were, they're, they're big, they're monsters, they're big head tides. Um, so that was pretty funny. People like, they're so much bigger in person. So it's cool that people were actually able to come out and see your stuff in person and handle it and touch it and feel it and look, you know, and see, is it crap? Is it garbage? Does it really look, does it look like what it looks like on Facebook? You know, when you show pictures of it, you're halfway through a project. So it was just so great meeting people, man, and, and bumping into people at the bar or at breakfast at the hotel or walking across the street or, you know, going down the 13th floor haunted house. Uh, it was just freaking awesome, man. It was a, such a great time. I wish it was another day longer. I wish we could have sold on Friday too, but Friday was a loaded day. Yeah, Vic's gonna be uh, Vic's gonna be at the Pensacola Home Haunters Convention. He'll be vending there. Vic's got a pretty busy year like next year, so uh, he'll be there though. Belina, oh, you're gonna hope to be in Pensacola. That's cool. Yeah, meeting meeting everybody was great, man. That's literally like the best part of the show, like seeing your friends and buddies and and seeing you know. Uh, people in person that you talk to online, you know, uh, it's in your groups and stuff, and you'll get them to encourage to share projects and stuff like that, man, that was awesome. Um, and then, like, you know, when the, the just, just seeing everybody bouncing around all over the area, it's, it's haunters everywhere, so you've got friends all over the damn place. Uh, you can see people walking to the motel, and, uh, to the hotel in costumes and stuff. Uh, so it, it was just a freaking awesome time, man. It's like, I wish it even wouldn't have ended, you know? They make scare haunt. Cannot wait to go next year and Trans World. You know, next year Trans World, so MHC, we know it's going to be next year. Uh, same building. It'll be Donnelly Stevens again. Uh, it's going to be the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th next year. So I think it's going to be the same setup. So it's going to be a, a Friday night haunt uh, tour probably, a Saturday sh uh, show to sell, and a Sunday show to sell. Identical to this year. June 9th to 11th, because Richard told us we were packing up that uh, they're going to release the dates real soon for next year. So next year, MHC will be same place, Donnelly Stevens Convention Center, uh, June 9th, 10th, and 11th. So 9th, I said Friday, probably haunt tour, 10, 11, you sell. So next year, if you guys make your plans, make them now. Um, Trans World is going to be early next year. Trans World is going to be early February. So I think it's like the 3rd or 4th or something like that, I, I think. Damn, it's going to be cold, man. Midwest temperatures, ice. I don't know if I'm going to make that. I'd like to make it. If Ezekiel makes it, I might try and go down just to hang out with him. Um, but, man, like, I think I'm going to try and bide my time and skip trans roll next year to be able to make stuff for MHC and save my money for that trip. Because I'll be vending again with Vic. We're going to try and get Dave there, too, so the whole trio is in person to see everybody and meet everybody. Uh, Dave couldn't get out, couldn't get away this year. Um... But next year, hopefully, same time, same place. We're going to be there again to wind up and tee off on everybody. Um, but trans will be in early. Oh, man, that kind of sucks. Supposedly, they're renovating the uh, the dome. So they got to bring it in early before the renovations happen or during renovations. So I'm not real psyched about trans roll next year. I'd like to go. But, man, you spend thousands going to trans roll. You know, your hotel seven or $800, you know, for three days. You know, if you spend money there, food, wandering around, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, MHC is, is expensive. Like, you know, your booth at MHC for a 10 foot by 10 foot square is $700. So if you do a 10 by 20 booth, you're $1,400. Our electric for the booth was $270. So me and Vic literally spent, when we split everything, the 30 foot booth, I think we spent like $1,175, almost $1,200 a piece just to vend. Then your hotel is another five, six, seven hundred dollars. Parking, food, you know, gas up there. Vic spent seven hundred dollars in fuel and diesel coming up to get them AC. So it's an expense, man. So you know, people were kind of, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, why is this this much? Uh, because it ain't cheap to vend. You go to a big show, it's big dollars. You have big dollars invested to get there. So if my some of my prices sticker shop people. I'm sorry, but after the booth, after the show, I told people they got to go up because our foams went up, my resins went up. 
Um, everything's up for everybody. Foams, latex is freaking ridiculous, man. I mean, they're because of the shortages and oh, it's COVID. They hammered everybody, man. We got freaking hammered. Anybody who makes anything got hammered. So some of my stuff was built on my old supply before I bought new stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep the prices as low as I can because gas is ridiculous, diesel's ridiculous. But after the show, I gotta raise prices on everything, man. There's otherwise no way I can make it and make a decent profit off it where it's worth actually making it to sell, you know. What's up, Ranger Ricks? 40 foot facade next year, peoples. 40 feet. Count them, 4 0. And I'm doing a little map, just like I did this year, so we're going to be ready for next year to kick ass and take names. Belina says, I used to work at Miller Steam Plant for Alabama Power in West Jefferson. Are you north or south Birmingham? I think Vic's right in Birmingham. Oh, Vic spent 800 bucks coming up here in fuel. And then he's going to come get his truck after it's fixed. So I can see Brother Vic probably within the next couple of weeks or so to get his truck fixed. You got to swing back up here, so. But yeah, you know, overall, I, I think it was a successful show. I mean, for Vic, it sucked because he wasted so much in, in fuel and then a truck breaking and all that stuff, so he's going to be in the hole, but he wants to come back next year, man. I bought on to my brother, man. I, I'm freaking proud of him, man. Like, we busted our ass. I'm proud, of, I'm proud of both of us for getting our shit together to make it up there. We were at MHC last year in Milwaukee, and people bagged on that show. I don't care what anybody says. That show was badass. It was awesome. It was a freaking blast. Milwaukee was freaking great. Don't listen to what anybody else says. Oh, it was small. It was, you know, it was freaking great. We, we had a freaking blast, and it was a longer show, too. It was a buy on a Friday show. Um, but this year, I heard a little bit of, you know, people like, eh, tire kicking, it's a small show. It was awesome, man. I didn't even get to see the whole damn show, and I loved it. Uh, I didn't get to see any of the stage shows. I was trying to watch videos where I could see, like, the hot sauce eating contest and the costume contest. So I'm looking for people to still put those videos out so I can see what the hell went on at the back of the room. You know, because normally we're there attending, but uh, I, I missed a bunch of stuff. So it's like, damn, man, I missed the zombie walk. So I had to go across the street to the hotel and get dressed and cleaned up, get some food. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a great show to come out. It's a family show. There's stuff for kids. Uh, MHC is freaking awesome. It's definitely cheaper than Trans World, but... Uh, Prices are cheaper because it's more home haunter based and actor based. But uh, speaking of actor, we got to meet Joey Bodkin. Joseph Bodkin was walking to the convention center. Uh, that was great. He's awesome. Great dude. Uh, talked to us for a little bit. Saw him at 13th Gate. He was working the queue line. So he, according, the guy's freaking amazing. I love his work and his characters and stuff. Uh, it was an awesome night, man. It was, it was the whole weekend was great. Yeah, we and, and it, we love we loved Milwaukee, man. Milwaukee was a freaking blast. You know, we were running around Milwaukee and running back and forth to the convention center. Um, Milwaukee was freaking great to us, man. We loved it. So we knew when we were in Milwaukee, it's like, dude, next year we got to be at MHC. We got to vent. We got to get all our shit together. And we got to vent at MHC, man. We got to get our names out there, get our channels out there and stuff like that. So it was cool just meeting people. And some people didn't know we had channels and stuff like that. or um, And just getting to see everybody else's stuff, man. It was freaking cool, man. Like, you know... Um, MHC is most definitely, you know, a, a go-to show. And I'm lucky it's close. I'm like two hours, hour and a half from Rosemont or so, you know, because I grew up in uh, close to Chicago. I grew up just south of Chicago, south of South Chicago. Um, so it's close for me. Trans World is like four and a half hours away. So I'm pretty lucky. I'm in a decent spot for those big shows. Um, but for MHC, we're most definitely going back. Uh, and people really gave us nice compliments. We had, uh, you know, people said, oh, man, you guys had the best booth here. And, and it's kind of sick because, like, the big places like Distortions and Ghost Ride, they don't do much for a booth. Most of their stuff is sold before they get there, so they don't make a big production of their booth. And me and Vic, you know, we had caught, Vic had built that whole 32-foot facade, foot facade with, like, eight coffins and skellies in every single one. And people were tripping out that, you know, at the bigger companies just really didn't do much for their booth because they're, they're there just to sell what product they had sold, so they're basically making a delivery. Um, and then selling off whatever small stuff they have that's either flawed or they can make stuff out or, or, they're, or they're cheaper, lower end stuff, you know, because it's a home haunter convention mostly. Um, but we got a lot of compliments on our booth that people were like, man, you guys went all out. You guys showed us up and all this. So uh, it was cool, man. We're hoping to do it again next year and, and knock another home run out of there, man. Uh, it, it was a blast. And we most definitely want to do it again. Um, you got to be careful about like your pricing because some of the stuff, you know, people, will, you know, with gas being so crazy and we get it, man, but like gas is nuts right now. Our supplies are super high, so you don't want to bring too much high end stuff, uh, maybe a couple of things or whatnot. But uh, 
you know, overall, I think I'm in the black. I, I think I did good enough to where I got out of there and actually made some money so I can get some more materials and, and stuff like that and pay off the other materials I have. So uh, we definitely want to do it again next year, man. It, it was a freaking blast. And we want everybody to show up. You know, a lot of people couldn't make it this year because gas or fuel and stuff, so we get that too. But, uh, man, we're hoping next year it gets even bigger and then more vendors come back. Uh, the same ones this year, plus more. I want to dip their feet in the waters again and, and come back to MAT that's in Chicago. Um, so we're psyched for next year. We got some, we got something really cool up our sleeve that we think is going to outdo everybody else's booth. So we're going to start working on that pretty soon. Um, we got some pretty great, we got a pretty good theme I think in mind if we if we run through it. So we're going to be doing some projects probably on that stuff that you guys will see on our channel, and hopefully you guys will see it in person next year at MAT. Belina is saying, is Vic going to have a haunt this year? I still want to make sure to go. Yeah, Vic's not doing it this year because he had so many damages last year on the building. He's waiting to get a building to do another haunt. An outside haunt is tough, man. You guys know the rigor of of that stuff. You know, rain and elements and your mother nature's mercy. So you can spend thousands on props and have them ruined or you guys catch on fire or, you know, people drive through your facade and, and all the shit that Vic went through last year putting that haunt up. Oh, my God. So... This year's probably going to be a building year for Brother Vic. Yeah, Brother Vic's in the red, man. Fuel and that truck. But uh, people, like, genuinely gave us nice comments. They liked the stuff that we built. Uh, they said we had the best booth there. Uh, they loved all the coffins. They loved the shock value and stuff. So hopefully we're going to turn it up again next year. And we're going to come back bigger and better. So, you know, you guys just keep your eyes out for us because... Uh, you know, we can't do the same old thing, so next year we, we got another plan in mind for uh, next year's booth. And we definitely want to go bigger, too. What's up, Edson? Fist bump, sir. <laughs> yeah, car and two floods in a tree. What's up, Gene? What's up? No way, Edson. I wish I'd love to go to Monster Day. It'd be awesome. But, uh, man, my schedule, just getting away for MHC is hard being four days. They're leaving here Thursday night to set up on Friday. You know, two jobs, it just, it's too hard to get away, man. You know, maybe later on one day when things slow down for me, I'd love to be able to do that if I can work something out. Uh, spend a day out there for Monster Day, that'd be awesome. Uh, like I said, just getting to MHC is a challenge. So, um, Hopefully, like Mr. Blair said, Brian from uh, Pumpkin Pulp, just be consistent. That's what me and Vic are hoping to do, man. I think that was like one of the best advice pieces of advice that uh, the other people gave us. Is like, you know, be consistent. Four or five years of MHC, then jump up to Transworld, unless we can do it earlier. But then Transworld's more time, more investment. Like at Transworld, your booth starts at $1,500 for a 10 by 10 foot square. I think I got the paperwork. When we came in Sunday morning, our... our uh, our Transworld contracts were laying on our booth. They must put them on there at night after it closed. And I thought, oh shit, what do we do wrong? Do we, do we, you know, I thought we were in trouble for something like this. The saga to fall down. Did the fire bar should come by? You know, what will we do? So I took it over to Lanny and Beth. And I'm like, oh, this is uh, your application for Transworld. Because they had that. They told us we really want to come to Transworld. Um, and Blake, too. Thank you, know, thank you to Blake. Because Blake came to the booth from Toxic Defense. You know, Blake's the pumpkin king. He was like, man, you, know, you guys should be at Transworld. I'm like, we're working on it, brother. We're working on it, you know. It's a big expense, and this is our first year at MHC. So hopefully a couple of years here, we get our wheels under us, and then we can attack Transworld, man. What's Gene saying? Ticks, chiggers, spiders, gnats, fleas, mosquitoes, no CMs. You must be talking about Bama. <laughs> it just says, oh, that sucks. I'm trying to make it this year. That'd be awesome, man. I'd love to go to Monster Day. I've seen the uh, some of the YouTube videos on it and stuff. It looks freaking great, man. It's like, how do you not want to spend a day walking around distortions and, you know, everybody's dressed up. It's like a, it's like a block party of monsters. Like, how badass is that, man? I'd love to make that one day. Oh, yeah, indoor haunts, more control. Yeah. But it's way more pricey because then you're talking bigger insurance and the fire marshals up your ass and uh, it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> I know, Vic, and I still, I'm, man, recovering from this show, you know, I'm still tired. Every time I lay down on the couch to try and watch a TV show or a movie, I fall asleep. I'm going to after there a half an hour, my, my, I nod off, I wake up a half an hour, like, what happened, what happened? You know, the, the credits are rolling. Um, just trying to recover from this and then go back to work and, 
trying to get Vic fixed up. We had to get his truck to a shop and get somebody to work on it while he went back home. Um, you know, trying to unload from the show and put stuff. I spent, like I said, all day today going through boxes and trying to put stuff back where it came from and see what kind of inventory I have so I can list a bunch of crap on Etsy or whatever, you know. Um, it's a grueling process. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to getting back to videos once I get my wheels back under me again. There's like so much stuff I want to make, man. Um, I want to do some videos again this summer, some cool videos. Oh my God, my cat's over there. Rise up. Rise up. Where's your daughter? Um... In fact, I was showing Vic, so like uh, one of my Cyclops heads, I'm like, you know, I had a spear. So I did, I did five Cyclops heads all together, and I did five individual ones. I didn't want to make them all the same. So two were kind of similar, but three were different, you know, different themes, which I'm an idiot. I should have just made five identical ones, but you guys know how I am. I just can't do the same old shit over and over again. So I had these spears, right, and I was uh, like, okay, I got to deck out three spears three different ways so that people can store them to be able to lay them down. They won't roll off a shelf or whatever, you know. So I'm like, okay, so I went through my tusks and made some stuff, put some spikes on them and stuff, and one of the spears, I had made a, um, a human scalp to go on there. So I was kind of tinkering with an idea that uh, I think my, one of my next videos is going to be human scalps. And I'll show you guys how to make these little DIY video on them. And they're pretty simple, man. Uh, and they're really, they're really freaking gruesome. I mean, they look nasty as hell. So... We're most definitely going to do a DIY on human scalps pretty soon uh, when I get through all the rest of this crap. But yeah, they're, uh, I put one of these on the uh, poles for the Cyclops. And I've seen the guy touch it and he was like, oh, uh. so it was pretty funny, man. I'm going to show you guys how to make these things like for trophies. And uh, you can do a whole belt of them or whatever you know. It's going to be awesome. So uh, that's going to be one of our tutorials coming up pretty soon uh, on my channel is uh, human scalps. <laughs> So Gene said, I saw another post showing your Tiki's big hit. You know, Gene, it's crazy. Like, people would walk in our booth, and, like, I saw girls, like, there was a girl taking a picture of Vic's, like, uh, tongues in jars and, like, enlarging it and then, like, taking multiple pictures like she was going to go home and make it or something. I saw a lot of people take pictures of our stuff and then go, and then start texting. Like, they were, you know, texting, you know, mom or the wife, hey, can I get this? You know, check this out. Come over here see this. But uh, people took a lot of video of our booth. They took a lot of pictures. They took a lot of pictures and then started texting. So I'm hoping that was good. Um, they asked if they could take pictures of stuff. Like, yeah, it's a haunt. So take as many pictures as you want. Um, it was great, man. Like, we had, there was a time we had like 27 or 30 people in our booth at one time. It was freaking nuts, man. Like, every time we stepped out in the aisle, I felt like we were in somebody's way. Like, uh, you know, because it was me and Vic and the people and so we're trying to get out of our booth to let people in the booth because we had all them tables, like, you know, single file. And it's like, man, every time I turned around to get out, get out of our booth to let people in, I felt like I was pushing my ass in Marsha's face, Ed's wife, or I was blocking Michael's booth from Ghost Ride. It's like, man, no matter where I go, like, I feel like I'm in somebody's way. I'm blocking something or something, you know? So uh, that was kind of a crazy feeling. So next year, we know we got to go bigger so we have more space. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the Tiki's Blake... <laughs> When Blake had come over, because Ken had talked to Blake online, so Blake came over, and I was, I was out of the booth. I had to run back to Haunter's Hangout. Uh, so then I came back, and uh, Blake was in the booth, wandering around. So he came over, and was like, dude, he's like, I have seen your tiki's all day long. I have seen them everywhere. So the people who bought them were walking around the show with him. You know, he's like, you gotta come to, you guys got to come to Transworld, man. He goes, your booth is packed. He goes, you guys would quadruple your sales at Transworld. He said, half this booth would be gone already, so... We're, we're working on it, Blake. I appreciate it. We're, we're working on it, brother. We're trying, man. We're trying to get off our ass and go to the big show. Yeah, components used for props must be fire rated. Yeah. What's up, John? Oh, delay homes. Trans World is geared so the pro haunts cost more and they make thousands and thousands. Place like MHC is where you can learn and fine tune yourself. That's what I think, Ken. I think uh, MHC is a great start for me and Vic. Um, trans world is a different level. That's people come from all over the world. Like they jump on planes from every corner of the earth and they come to buy for their amusement parks, their haunted houses, their, you know, water parks, their attractions, their museums, their everything. So trans world is like a world stage. It's literally the Super Bowl of Halloween. And for the stuff that we make, you know, yeah, I think we do better there. It would be better seen. Um, 
but we're working on it. I think, I think like, we're going to stick to what Mr. Uh, Brian Blair said, and we're going to stay consistent, try and hammer up MHC and, and build a big sort of, like, um, springboard for us at MHC so that we can hopefully jump to Trans World maybe 2024, maybe 2025, within the next few years, man, if I can get my ducks in a row and, and job-wise be able to get the time off to go to Trans World, because that's a big stage, man. Like, that would be great for our YouTube channels and for... Uh, the props we make or whatnot, you know, um, because everybody sees your stuff at Transworld. That stuff goes around the world. Uh, MHC is a big show too, but not like Transworld. But we're happy. We, you know, we love MHC, man. It was, you know, well, last year was a blast. It was good to us this year, uh, minus you know the truck snafu and fuel being ridiculous. Um, people still spend some decent money, so hopefully next year, if we stay sort of on the same trajectory, we'll do better. We'll build up our rep at uh, at MHC. And then by the time we get to Trans World, people will be waiting for us to show up there. So that's kind of what we're hoping for. Gene says, I made those in the past for screen use, like an appliance. Yanks off with line. Edson says, your walkthrough was one of the best ones I saw. That guillotine was a bomb. Edson, that guillotine, man, I had no clue that guy used solid 6x6 six six posts. Vic told me that. He said, that's solid wood post, man. Like six, I'm like, get the hell out of here. Are you serious? They drug that in here? So on Saturday, it was so crazy. Like, I was literally afraid to take a piss. There was people everywhere. It's like, man, if, if I run off, you know, every time, every time Vic stepped away from the booth, people would hold up one of his eyeballs. I'm like, I'll take this or I'll take an apple. Like, son of a bitch. Like, every time Vic leaves, I got to go make change with somebody. So Saturday, we had no time to record what the hell soever. So Sunday, I'm like, man, I got to get a video. I said, I don't know if it's going to be as crazy as, as it is today, which was Saturday. So I'm like, okay, so show up at 10 on Sunday. I got in there at like 9, right before 9. I'm like, I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to do a walkthrough before the crowd hits and try and hit a bunch of booths and show people what's here with a little less chaos, you know, a little less noise. There's no big fanfare. It's easier to get around people. So I thought, okay, this will be a little different. I don't know if people are going to like it or not. But, uh, you know, I, I never like try to do the same thing over and over and over to beat a dead horse. So it's like, screw it. We're going to do a pre-show walkthrough. Um, I really liked uh, Halloween Life's video, The Halloween Life. Um, Rob and Katrina, I got to meet them too. They were there. They had a channel, The Halloween Life, on uh, YouTube. Look them up and prescribe. Uh, they go to a lot of the big shows, man. They were there at all of them. They were there wandering around. Um, that was cool. Uh, little blue-haired kid. Uh, little blue-haired kid. Got blue little swish, Nike swoosh. Brick Thunder, he was there. Um, he did our he did our booth, did a walk through there, some nice conferences. Thank you, Brick. Uh, thank you, Halloween Life, uh, Katrina and Rob. Uh, it was just great seeing all the people, man. Like, I mean, she was crazy. The Wicked Makers people were there. You know, I saw that girl. Uh, they were, and I couldn't think, like, man, she looks familiar. You know, like, where the hell have I seen that face before, you know? And uh, I, I couldn't think of it Sunday, and I was out of the booth, and they had actually recorded our booth. I saw their walkthrough, and she gave some nice compliments on the tiki's and stuff that the corpses and stuff, the coffins that we made, or Vic made. And I thought, man, you know, God damn it, they're Wicked Makers. I saw them on the last episode of uh, Haunted Hangout, one of the last episodes of the, the, the uh, YouTubers. And I'm like, that's where I saw that girl at, man. She was a freaking YouTuber, and she was on uh, Haunter's Hangout. So that was pretty cool. They gave us some nice compliments. So uh, we saw Eduardo from Monster Tutorials. Um, we were talking about it Saturday. Ed, poor Ed, man. Ed had a hell of a go at the show. Um, it was like Saturday night after the show was over. Me and, and Chad Smith and Rob O'Brien, Vic, we were staying outside the auditorium. And we're like, man, did you guys see Eduardo today? You know, Monster Tutorials. And, and, and Ed's like, or no, Chad was like, no, he goes, I haven't seen him, you know. He's like, uh, his booth was empty all day because there was a lady at his booth. But he goes, I didn't see him at all. So I thought, well, damn, I wonder if he made it up or what happened. So literally five minutes later, we're walking across the street back to the hotel. I get a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and it's Ed. Like, oh, Ed, we were just talking about you literally like two minutes ago, three minutes ago. And, uh... He was like, yeah, he's like, me and the wife, you know, we went and got pizza, and we got sick, like, you know, food poisoning or something like that. He goes, so we were in the room recuperating all day. Um, so it's like, oh, that sucks, man. They flew in, you know, and they were there. So he missed his class with Alan. So he felt bad, so he's supposed to be doing it. I guess he was going to do a video for Jen and Rich, the promoters of the, the MHC and Trans World show. And then uh, Sunday, it was kind of calm Sunday afternoon. And I think Vic was out, and April was wandering around with Savage, I think. So I'm just kind of leaning against that podium Vic built. So Eduardo walks up again, leans on the other side of the podium. He was asking how the show was going. Uh, asked him how his booth was going and stuff. And 
Uh, he gave us some nice compliments on the stuff we made, so got to meet Ed, that was cool. You know, it was just, MHC is such a, it's like such a down-to-earth, mellow, super cool show. Um, you know, it, you get to bump into people that you see, or you talk to, you interact with on the, in, on, on the, you know, in the interwebs and stuff, so... MHC, you know, if you've never been to Transworld, MHC is a great show to get your feet wet at, just to wander around. Because a lot of the same people from there have been to Transworld, too, so it's it's totally worth going for sure. But the guillotine, freaking awesome, man. Uh, I, I loved it. When the guy set it up for me and dropped both of them, I walked past the one day, I got to run past and see it was, there was something was going on, there was a crowd over there, but I couldn't tell exactly what the hell was going on until Saturday when I saw work. Vic's like, man, he's got a working guillotine over there, so... Only at MHC, folks. You know, that stuff should have been at Transworld. That, that would have been freaking awesome. The Gene's saying, yeah, it's cool to see your stuff this year. I've watched you... I've uh, watched you make it for Transworld, seen three or four so far. Yeah, you know, a lot of my stuff, you know, I've, I've done before Transworld and didn't... You know, I always wanted to go to Transworld for a bunch of years now. We've just never been able to swing it with, you know, job and everything else. So uh, Transworld was just... That's another show that you really need all four days, and you probably still can't see everything. Um, I spent this year, Friday, Saturday, Sunday there, was not enough time. You literally need a week in that place, you know? Um, so I'm hoping that, like, if me and Vic ever make the jump to Transworld, that we can at least spend a day after we set up our booth walking around and seeing what's there before cloud crowds flood in. Because MAT was nuts. Saturday was crazy. It was crazy busy, but it was awesome, too. Gene, I had a ton of pictures of people taking pictures of the Cyclops. Uh, like photo ops and stuff, they would stand in front of the little tree stump I made with the Cyclopses up, you know. Um, I think people really dug them. I didn't think people would like them too much because, you know, they're Cyclopses. They're sort of a mythical creature. And I like oddball shit. I don't like always do, you know, clown heads on poles or zombie heads on poles. Although I did make a zombie Cyclops, so I just thought that would be cool. Um, you know, I'm not always into the popular stuff. And I just thought, man, I should have probably only made three of these. You know, I probably shouldn't have made five. Originally, I thought I was probably going to do ten. What the fuck is that? Is that tree fitting? Vic, what the hell are you doing? Oh, there it is. Oh, hell no. Vic, save your money, brother. Jesus Christ, your truck just broke down. You're insane, man. Look at my brother. Send me three dollars. When you get up here, I'm going to give you a fitty. But yeah, the Cyclops, I, I was shocked that... Uh, that, you know, people really kind of gravitate toward them as much as they did. So, I mean, in the future, I kind of feel safe. Like, I got this guy right here. So, uh, you know, I'm a huge Batman fan. Obviously, I got Joker tattooed inside my arm. And I picked up this figure thinking he was kind of small. And he's literally like seven pounds of goddamn plastic. So, I think I want to sculpt Clayface's head and make it like a trophy. And do it in rigid foam and like resin teeth. So that's a project I might do this year. I'm going to need about 50 pounds of clay to make this monster, though. But, you know, I'm a huge Batman fan. So uh, that's another project I might do this year that might show up at MHC next year if I get it done. Because it's kind of a weird, you know, oddball thing. But, uh, you know, you could use it as anything. You could use it as a meatloaf monster or whatever the hell. You could make it basically into anything. Or if you're a Batman fan, take it home and hang it in your man cave, you know. I thought that'd be freaking cool. But there was a, man, you guys, there was a lot that me and Vic talked about since he was stuck up here for a couple of days while we were trying to get his truck fixed. Um, we talked about, a, we, had, we made a lot of plans, talked about a lot of stuff. So this is probably going to be a busy-ass year for us. You guys stay tuned, man. We're going to try and keep you guys in your heels with all the shit we got planned this year. Cat says, Vic's coffins, your skull wall, tiki's in the barrel toppers would be great for trans world. You get there. We're, we know we're going to get there, Cat. It's just a matter of time getting all, forcing all our stars to align, man. Uh, trans world's a big show. You want to be there, you know. Uh, and, and everybody encourages us, man. Like, uh, Robert Resurrect costumes and Quinn, you know, uh, Lanny and Beth. Like, you guys got to come to trans world. You guys do awesome there, you know. Blake and just, just like... The whole Haunt family, the whole Haunt, you know, uh, vendor family, man, it, it's freaking amazing, man. It's like everybody helps everybody and picks everybody up. Nobody's like, well, you know, if I tell this guy to come to trans, it means I'm going to lose money. You know, that's the last thought in anybody's head, man. Nobody even thinks like that. Everybody prays you and just wants to pick you up and send your ass to trans world. Um, so it's great, man. It's like there's no other community that lifts people up as much as the, as the Haunt community. And I'm so appreciative of Lanny and Beth and David Quinn and Chad Smith and Rob O'Brien 
and Blake and Edit Distortions and Michael at Ghost Ride, uh, Alan, you know, everybody who vends, Brian Blair at Pumpkin Pulp, uh, Haunters Hangout, Diablo for being there and, and you know, making sure the Haunters get recognition. I, I mean, we, me and Vic would have been nobody there if we didn't have the help and encouragement from all those folks, man. So, you know, man, we, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. You guys are Haunt fam for life, man. And we bend over backwards for any of you guys, for sure, man. You guys need something, you call us, you message us, you know, we'd be there in a heartbeat for you guys. Vic says, not sure how mandated smart car is going to pull my trailer up. <laughs> a smart car. Oh, my God. A little wind-up car. It ain't going to love that damn trailer. <laughs> Jesus, I have no clue as to what may be going down in LR Arkansas, Arkansas for Halloween or shows. I really get off the farm. That kind of sucks, Gene. Sometimes you just got to make the splash and scoot, man. Just take a couple of days or a weekend and, and hit a show. And I tell you, it really, you know, as tired as I was and exhausted as me and Vic were from setting up and tearing down, like just seeing the crowds and talking to people that you meet on Facebook or they post in your group. I mean, that's literally like the fuel that keeps you going during the day. You're like, oh, man, you know, I just met so-and-so. I talked to Barr or I talked to Kristen Gray or we met Frady or, you know, or Brian Blair came over. It's like... That's literally your lifeblood for the show, man. It kind of gives you a high and, and some adrenaline to get through that day until you hit the hotel and you just like face plant into the mattress at the end of the day. Uh, and, and, and that's what basically gets you through a show, man. That's like your life's blood there. Thank you, Bluff. I hope you liked everything. I tried to bring some stuff from the channel that I had made, some stuff I made off the channel. Um, just some other things I make too, like different magnets that I didn't really film or anything like that. Just to kind of like mix it up, you know, so the people wouldn't be expecting uh, everything they saw. They would be like, oh, there's some new stuff there from Cobwebs, you know. So next year, hopefully, will be the same thing, we hope. Monster Mitchell said, didn't give me an option to do tree fitting. <laughs> Somebody sent me tree fitting. I don't know who that was, but thank you. So they got this thing where like on your, uh, your channel, there's like a, a, a thank you button or something like that. So it's almost like a super chat where people can type in like, you know, a tip, like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. I don't even know what the hell the range is. So YouTube splits it with you 30, 70. 70 goes to the creator and YouTube keeps 30 of it. I think you can leave a message that says like, it just says thanks or something like that, but you pick your amount. And somebody sent me Tree Fitty and I'm like, God damn it, is that one of you guys I asked Vic and Dave, did you guys send me Tree Fitty? You know, cause we always talk about, yeah, we'll put a price on the, everything's Tree Fitty with us, you know, Tree Fitty like South Park. So somebody sent me Tree Fitty, I don't know who the hell it was, whoever it was, man, fucking step up and let me know. Cause I thought that shit was funny as hell when I saw it. I, I think that's what it is. When you look at your YouTube analytics, I, I really don't know how to read that shit. We, we scratch our heads. Are you guys know what this means? What's this supposed to be for? Uh, it's actually pretty funny, but somebody sent me Tree Fitty, and I was just laughing my ass off. That was so damn funny, man. <laughs> the clown tags. Hell no, Ed. No clowns. Uh, we had nothing clown related in our booth this year, did we, Vic? No, no, I don't think we had anything clown related in our booth, and we still survived, so hey, good to us. Cat says, they probably have a Cyclops because they were different. Too many of the same old, same old. People want weird, different. You know, and that's possibly true. Um, you know, I like to make kind of off-the-wall stuff and Cyclops. You know, I grew up a D&D &D kid, man. I played D&D, &D, same as Warren. You know, I saw Warren's post earlier, um, Warren Maxwell. And I thought, you know, man, you know, a lot of my stuff goes back to my D&D &D roots where I get my monsters from and stuff like that. So it's like, I like doing off-the-wall stuff, man. Like maybe, you know, maybe somebody wants to put a Cyclops in the yard on a pole. I don't know. I, said, I sure do. I'm glad I heck got one less so I can stay up in the damn yard for my kids, you know. Um... But I don't always like to go mainstream, you know, it's like, let's take them different twists and turns and, and you know, maybe people hit on it, maybe they hate it, yeah, but you take that chance, as long as I let you make it for yourself, and if people don't like it, it's like, hey man, more for you, man, you can decorate your own yard or house with it, so that's always awesome. So it's always a bonus if people don't like something that you like, because there's more of it for you. What's up, they're on. Late to the party, man, you're not late, you just show up whenever you get here, no biggie. I'm just happy people actually showed up. So Theron wanted to get my thoughts on Transro being in February. Hopefully the weather doesn't wreak havoc. I actually mentioned on that earlier, Theron. God damn it, Vic, stop sending money. Keep that shit. Keep your money. Your goddamn trucks broke down. Uh, so Theron, Transro in February. Midwest weather. February 3rd, 4th, 5th. That's going to be brutal. Um, I talked to Quinn about it. It's because Quinn's close. Quinn's like two and a half hours from transfer because he's actually in Missouri. Vic, stop that shit. What are you doing? You got a fucking truck to pay for. Stop sending money. Uh, 
I don't, I don't know if I'm game. Uh, since me and Vic are going to be at MHC, uh, we might hold back and save our money and our bill time for MHC because when you go to Trans, when you spend a couple grand going, by the time you get your hotel and tickets and spending money and food and travel up there, you know, it's you know it's a couple of grand to go to Trans where we can take that money, we can put it towards MHC and have a better booth, more kick-ass product. Would I like to go? I, I really want to go with Ezekiel because he's fucking nuts. I can just imagine going to a show with Ezekiel. Uh, spend three, four days in the third world or walking around, uh, that'd be nuts, man. Um, so this year I'm on the fence about, about Trans World because we have a show to go to in June, like literally like see June, March, April, May, June. Four months later, MHC is happening. I don't know. Of, uh, I'm not thrilled about Trans World being in February now. I've only been to one. Uh, and March was fine. I love the weather. You know, I don't mind cold. It was like 40 degree days during the day. Um, but that was fine for me because we live in Viking weather up here up north. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence. I don't think I'm going to be at Trans World this year. I'd like to go to see everybody and hang out with Nick Palmer from uh, Stilo's Curse Haunted House and, and see the other friends and buddies we have and have a beer with everybody, you know. But this year, I don't know, with M8C coming, me and Vic want to be consistent. So I don't know if I'm going to be at Trans World this year. I think I'm going to hold off and make sure that we are set for M8C or try and get to, to Trans World but not a priority. MHC is going to be the priority for a couple of years. What the hell is that? Oh, on his God damn it, Jay. Save your money, man. You just got back. Um, save your cash. You guys are freaking insane, man. Uh, but Trans World, man, it's, it's, a, it's an expensive show to be at. So to go to Trans World, then a couple of months later, you're bouncing back to uh, MHC. I don't know. Unless, we, unless I make a, a, a shit ton of stuff for... Well, I've got stuff left over now, so I have a little, I have a little uh, supply built up. So I might do a show in September that's closer because I might not have to build too much, change some stuff around, do a couple of things. It's a lot smaller show. Uh, so I might do a show here in September just for the hell of it, the bizarre, 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 um, possibly. But then I want to I want to beef up everything, all my stock, everything, locks, and everything else for MHC next year, plus make new stuff. There was stuff that I've showed you guys this year, like my Krampus hoof. I couldn't get it molded. My morning star or flail head, I couldn't get that molded. Just didn't have time. There was only so much time. So there's a lot of stuff I didn't finish that I still have that's sort of like halfway through that I want to jump on and do for... Oh, the bunnies are out. Um, sorry, distraction. Squirrel! There was a, a bunch of uh, stuff that I didn't finish this year that I want to take to trans or to MHC. So hopefully this year I have time to concentrate on that. Plus new stuff so I can really shock you guys for um, MHC next year where me and Vic show up, you know? Because we're going to have like a whole new game ready to go. Yeah, you know, I think we did. I did better than Vic. Of course, Vic had more expense, man. $800 in fuel and diesel one way. That's a goddamn shame, man. You know, our president has to get off his ass and do something about this, open our pipeline back up, and we need to start being self-sufficient for Americans, not for other countries. You know, if we can make it here, let's buy it here, you know? I'm not very much of a political guy. I'm not either a Democrat or a Republican or any of that crap. I just know I'm an American. And I'd like to see you ask any asshole politician how much a gallon of gas is, how much is a gallon of milk, how much is a loaf of bread. I bet you they couldn't answer two out of three. I bet you they couldn't answer one out of three. And that's just disgusting to me, so it just pisses me off. Vic, stop sending money, god damn it. Save your money. You didn't have to spend another $800 on diesel getting home when you get your truck picked up. Cat says, you guys absolutely hit it doing shows, big or small. It usually refuels the tank. We need validation of our work, the ideas, suggestions from folks. It's our juice. You know, that's true, man. Anytime I put something like on cobwebs and I'm like, if I'm, you know, kind of working on something or a piece of something, I'll throw it up there. And, uh, you know, sometimes people give you a hint like, man, you know, what about this? What about that? Like, I take all that stuff into consideration, man, because everybody looks at it with different eyes. So if you're stuck on a project, man, or you're building something, you don't know, like, Man, like, you know, I want to do this. What should I use to get the right product would be best to, to finish this or start this, do this? So, you know, the input from everybody is just in, is, is insane, man. I love that stuff. I love the feeding frenzy on that stuff. And that's basically what Cobwebs and, and all the, the trio of terror groups are about. It's about everybody getting validation from the work, no matter your skill builder. You know, if you do paper mache like, like Jay does, or you do, you know, fiberglass, or, or you draw, you're an artist, you paint. Maybe you do resin work. Maybe you do... You know, maybe you're a mask maker, you know, maybe you're like Keith Martin, you do all the little bottles and turn those into monsters, which are freaking phenomenal, man, like recycling all those bottles. 
I, I love watching his work. I mean, you guys are literally like the lifeblood that, like, you guys see this? You guys see this? We constantly talk about you guys and, and the stuff you're doing, man. It's, it's insane. Um, that stuff so charges our batteries when we see that stuff and you guys interact. Um, that's really like the best part of the groups. And for us, we don't discriminate. You guys want to post something? Post it, man. Show your art. Uh, get some love. Get some recognition. Show the people what you like. Show the people what you build so that everybody can jump on and uh, get some ideas and, you know, get some stuff for their their haunt or, you know, maybe they're stuck in a project in their head and they can't think, oh, you know, I don't know what to do. I got so many couple of things to do. And they see something and then, boom, they're off and running, man. They're like, yeah, I got to have this, man. I got to do this. I saw this. And it's just like, you know, a lightning rod to the head, boom. Uh, and, and that's what we love about the groups. We try and be all inclusive with the haunt community. Uh, and that's another thing, you know, race, creed, wherever you come from, you know, wherever you're from, man, if you're a haunter, you're one of the fam. So, you know, we kind of like to share and, you know, somebody's stuck. Hey, somebody come up with some material that can help you finish or push you further along in your project. So that stuff's awesome, man. We, we, we love that stuff. It's food stamps. Hey, man, you just place food stamps? I'll spend them. <laughs> I hate cold weather. That's because you're not used to it, Vic. Come up here in February. Wait till you get to Trans World. You're going to freeze your ass off. You're probably going to need them second pair of underwears you left on Savage's floor for the blowed out nickel region. Yeah, you're probably going to need those. Double bag, brother. I see. Abby says, would you have room to set up your voodoo witch at a show? Actually, yeah. My swamp witch, she's pretty small. I could stab her in the corner real easy. I didn't, I didn't bring any of like my props I made for the channel, uh, Patty, because I was kind of afraid. Like I was kind of, I almost brought Little Man. Uh, I was gonna dress Little Man up and put him outside the booth in the front there and have him hold like my little cards or or stickers or something for people. But I didn't want people to think that they were for sale. So like the stuff I built on my channel, I don't really build it to sell. I build it for me for my home haunt. But, you know, some stuff, if I make multiples or I have a mold of something, then that stuff I can sell, sure. Because um, it's not a one-off. And even some of the one-off stuff I have, I don't have space to keep it all. So, like, some of my candlesticks and stuff I put up there for sale or my nutcrackers, I'm running out of room. Um, Kat had mentioned before, I was like, you got to put your nutcrackers up. you got to put your nutcrackers up. So I sold one of my nutcrackers at MHC. I sold the, um, the pumpkin rot scarecrow. Uh, some guy came in. He was insane. He goes, do you mind if I, he's like, you got, you got like, I, I really like your stuff. Do you mind if I just start making a pile? I'm like, help yourself, brother. So he, you know, split, he bought, I think, three skull sconces. He bought two of the gargoyle shells. He bought three of my bat plaques. Um, he came back the next day. To, he forgot a bat plaque, or I didn't package up one of his sconces. Uh, the guy's been awesome, man. I mean, been texting him back and forth. He was asking how I make certain things. It's like, dude, jump on my channel. I'll show you, man. Or if you need help with something, he does theater work. I said, just hit me up and text me, man. Let me know. <laughs> So I've been going back and forth with him, but he was awesome. Like, you know, one guy spent like, I don't know, 700 bucks or something like that. So it's like, hell yeah, I'm going to pick up the goddamn phone for you. Are you serious? Hell yeah, you spent $700 with me? Like, you know, if you need to learn how you're going to tweak those props or do something with them, I'll tell you what they're made out of and how I made them and what's your best, you know, reason for or uh, your best chance for successes, you know, by repainting something or if you're going to tweak something. You know, just, just call me, let me know. But yeah, I could bring her, I could bring some of my... My, uh, my props from home, Patty, but I'd be afraid that people would try and buy them. And I, don't, I don't, really don't want to bring anything that's not for sale. Um, and I, just, I would just kind of feel weird about that. That's why I didn't bring a little man. So I was like, well, what do you want if somebody tries to buy him? It's like, he's not really there for sale. He's just the helper to hold, you know, to give out uh, stickers or, or whatnot or candy or something like that, you know? So I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day I'll, I'll build something, you know, that I can bring to the show that's just like basic part of a display or something, you know? But I, I kind of thought about that, like, maybe I should bring some stuff, you know, that, that people have seen on a channel, like my big voodoo mask that I built for Eduardo's Math Challenge. But I thought, well, I don't want people to think it's for sale, so it's like, why bring it and then, you know, let somebody down, I guess. Okay, Berlin is asking, how did the hand and the eye display go over? I really like the hand, I think it's really cool. Um, I got a lot of good feedback. I forgot to turn the damn lights in the thing for, like, the, most of Saturday. It's like, oh, so I got lights in there, son of a bitch. But uh, people seem to like the displays. They like that one. Uh, a lot of people like the treasure chest. Somebody kept on sticking an apple in the treasure chest. And uh, we found out later that it was a customer that they wanted to make sure they, they swung back around and bought, I think it was a red apple. So they took one of Vic's apple and they hid it inside the treasure chest so that they wouldn't, so somebody wouldn't buy it off the table. I thought it was funny as hell. We were laughing our ass off because she came back later and bought like two apples, I think, from Vic. Um, I got a lot of, I got a guy who wanted to buy my coffin display that all my locks were on. 
and he, he's a home haunter, and he's like, you know, he's man, he goes, you know, can I at least shoot you an offer? I'm like, I, you know, I didn't even think about selling my display because like, what am I going to put my locks on at other shows? You know, I can hang them on a board or something like that. But uh, the coffin display got a lot. The, the catacomb sconce, man, people took a lot of pictures of that. People took a ton of pictures of Vic's coffins and the skelly sticking out. Like I said, they were they were like taking pictures and then they were texting. So they were like going back to their masters. Ooh, you know, can I buy a skelly and a coffin? You know. So that was funny as hell. Um, but just to have somebody take a picture of something you make, either they're going to go home and try and copy it. That's still awesome, man. I mean, that's great. That's going to spur somebody on to build something. And, and you guys know that's what a trio is about. We don't care if somebody copies us. I mean, that's what we're here for. Trying to give you guys as many ideas as you can so that um, you can build your own stuff. We can fill you up with ideas and, and you can go home and make your own stuff. So that's awesome, man. Vic says, I don't have MHC video left. It's in my GoPro in Indiana. <laughs> Vic, I've got your uh, I've got your GoPro. So I dug to the trailer today. Check this out. <laughs> All right. So Vic got a little bit of footage at the show, and then he takes his GoPro, and he chucks it into a box, and it ends up in a trailer. So I had to go fish it out. It's been like 110 degrees in there. So we're going to have high heat on Monday in the 90s. So I'm going to have to open your man door and let some freaking heat out of there before the whole trailer melts down and all your props and stuff melts. I've got your GoPro in the house where it's not going to get melted. <laughs> yeah, Vic got some footage, but it's here in Indiana, so he can't do a video. So when he gets his truck fixed and he gets back home, you guys get an M8C video from Vic. So that'll be funny as hell. Hello, Caroline. Oh, that's awesome, man. You got to see us at MHC? That's cool. Artists do rock, man. Anybody who, you know, like Vic says, even if you draw stick figures, man, that's awesome. Show us your stick figures, you know? Because art is in the eye of the beholder. It's interpretive, you know? Like those people who, like, eat a sandwich and then they see Jesus Christ on there. I mean, you never know where art comes from. That's very true, Gene. Artists do inspire other artists to move forward. It's like somebody could be stuck and almost have like uh, like writer's block or they've got a prop and they're like, man, I'm so far, but I don't know how to finish shit. And then I saw so-and-so's prop and I'm like, yeah, that's where I got to go, man. Like a lightning run out of the head, boom. And then they can you know, hit the ground running and start making a bunch of stuff. And a lot of times that spills over and you get multiple projects. You know, you get one inspiration and you get multiple projects. And that's, that's the best, man, where you just like, fills up your tank and then you're running for a while, man. Like for me... I had Lanny come over and he was like, man, you know, he's looking at the tiki's and stuff. And he's like, where do you get your inspiration from? You know? And I'm like, books, Lanny, I'm a book whore. I've probably got, I don't know, 2,000 books, 3,000 books, maybe more. I don't know. I've got books at work. I've got books in a refrigerator in the garage. I've got three seven foot bookshelves full. I've got a barrister bookcase full of books. My books go back to the 1800s. I've got 1800s books. So I love books on voodoo, on art, on video game art. Uh, I mean, everywhere. I mean, everything for me is inspiration. I restore classic cars for a living. So, you know, those are works of moving art, how the designers put the cars back together in the day and what, why they use certain things or, you know, why they made a dash look like an airplane. And, uh, man, to me, there's art everywhere, man. Just look around and something's bound to inspire me. But I love the horde books. And I look on the Internet, too, sometimes. But, uh, like I told Lanny, books, man, he's like, well, you need to send me some of the books you have, so... I'm gonna have to send Lanny some links for some stuff, man. Uh, but I, I love books, man. I love, I love paper in hand. Something I can refer back to, Jim, a postcard or something in the page, and go back and look at something later. I'm not a big fan of e-readers. I'll probably never have one. And I look on the internet occasionally here and there for stuff, just to kind of fill my head real fast with something. And then I just, I just run, man. Just shoot off and run. Okay, Gene says I used to have a muse. Bad face. However, now I get inspired by watching TV or others on YouTube. And Gene, that's the thing, man. You can go anywhere. Like, you know, Google it. You know, go to a bookstore. Pick up a, pick up a random book, you know. Um, these video game guys, man, their stuff is freaking amazing. Like, I don't even play video games, but I'll buy the art of for a video game or a movie. Um, like Guillermo del Toro, that guy draws. He paints. And people don't really realize, you know, yeah, they've seen Pants Labyrinth and all that stuff and Hellboy. But the guy's freaking a phenomenal artist, man. Um, there's art everywhere. You know, you don't have to just pick up a book on Picasso or Tussaud or Van Gogh or whatever, you know. Um, it's the weirdest shit that can inspire you, man. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. And it don't have to be on the internet. Let's see, did you sell that crawling monstrosity, my fave? That must be Vix, his, crawl, his uh, crawling man. Gene says, I've had stuff, the mask and oil painting. 
stole when I refused to sell them. It was even more impressed, better confident. Man, that sucks, man. Oil paintings take a long time to dry. I have rarely used oils, mostly acrylics. But, um, you know, I was growing up, my dad's girlfriend did oil paintings, so I would oil paint with her sometimes. But, man, that shit takes forever to dry. Um, oil, you know, oil painting as a medium, that's like a whole new level, man. That's one that I just don't have the time for. I gotta go fast, fast, fast. What's up, Rob? We were just talking about you. Our vendor brothers. I see says, I'm stealing your witch idea. I do a lot of witches and werewolves for my front yard and friends. I just trim trees and set aside nice long ones for the tripod. I see, I was just looking at mine the other day because I cut, uh, I think I cut 10 to 11 foot limbs. My shop is in a forest, uh, so I have all access to trees and like grapevine and uh, sticks and, and, and uh, rods for, for days, man. So I try and take as much as I can from other nature. And my tripod's still standing strong out in the backyard. I'll bring it back up front again for Halloween again. But, man, totally steal my witch idea. I'm going to make some more witches this year. Um, I picked up one at Transworld. Or not Transworld. I picked up a witch at, um, at MHC. So I think my next video is going to be my MHC haul. I'm going to show you guys what I got while I was there. Uh, and then I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to show you guys how to make these uh, disgusting-ass scalps. So... Those should be coming up real soon once I bounce back from this show. But MHC Hall is going to be the next video coming up, though, for sure. What's up, Lloyd? Lloyd, you still got the COVID, Hiv? Or did you kick it? Are you back home in Texas now? Because you got Texas Hornets Convention coming up. You've been out there fly fishing in Florida and walking around the waves and all that shit, and then you got the Hiv. So let us know you're better, Lloyd. Give us a thumbs up. Gene, yo, your cat sounds hungry. I just fed mine. My cat is always hungry. How much is down away? 23 pounds? He's a fat bastard. He looks like a barrel with four little legs and somebody painted him black and white. He looks like a little Holstein cow. He's a butterball. He's fat. He just lays around and he eats and he whines. Yes, he is. He is fat. Gene says, Jepper, I like watching you and Alan and two others I watch on work on related stuff. That's cool, man. Uh, I watched Alan for a lot of years. Edson, have you tried making props from Bondo? No, Edson, I'll tell you why. Okay, so a lot of my stuff I pull from the automotive field since I restore cars, and actually I dip in and use those products for some of my props. Uh, body filler, commonly referred to as Bondo, especially the Bondo brand, specifically the Bondo brand body filler is trash. It's garbage in a fucking can. Don't use it. It's trash. It swells up. It's horrible. Body filler absorbs water. So anything you put with body filler in it and you put it outside, it's going to swell up and blow apart. You ever see anybody who goes going down the highway and they've got like a rusty rear uh, quarter over the wheel and they put body filler on it and then you see the body filler, it's like huge, it looks like golf balls and there's rust leaking through it. That's because body filler is a sponge. Uh, it absorbs water, it goes right down to the steel again and it just holds rust to the car until it pushes itself off. So I never use body filler. Um, I usually use resin, so like for my Cyclopses. So the three I built that have a big spear st sticking out of their head I knew that if somebody was going to stab them in the yard, that rainwater was going to get down there. And it might freeze because I'm in Indiana. We get frozen storms. We get snow. We get ice. We get 100-degree days. We get 40-degree nights. So what I did was I flipped mine over, and I filled the tube with resin until I couldn't see the steak sticking out of their head anymore. So I try and use resin for that because it's a lot stronger. It'll last outside. You can smack it with a hammer. You can throw it on the ground. You can drive over with a car. And you got a better chance of it lasting with, with, uh, than body filler or Bondo. Uh, if you're going to use that type of stuff, you want to use Duraglass, which is a chopped up short strand fiberglass that spreads like Bondo, but it sands like a goddamn brick. So you're going to have to use a grinder to sand it down. That stuff will last outside. That's okay because it's, it's actually fiberglass, um, short strand, but it's like a pulp, like, uh, oh, yes, baby. I will totally have one of those. Hells yeah. Have me a little drinky winky. But yeah, I don't use Bono for, for props, but I will use all metal, which is ground aluminum with a liquid hardener. Um, it's got to be strong for, for me. I don't want to blast. I, my stuff's got to last. I don't want to make anything or sell anything to somebody that's going to fall on their part after being out there for a couple of days like a spirit Halloween prop, you know, because nobody likes that shit. If you just look at it, something over there is too hard, it breaks. Oh, that's good. Just like a popsicle. Am 
My friend was a Subway sandwich artist, Gene, for many years. That's it, Gene. I, too, love actual books. I have huge tomes on so and so I'm the same way, but I'm a history buff. I've got books on civilization. I've got books on animals. I've got books on war. I've got fantasy books. Um, I've got actual novels. You know, I've read all the Lord of the Rings. I've read the uh, whole um, Game of Thrones. Uh, I love Ari Salvatore. I read almost his, all the whole Drizzt series. I read all that. Uh, even like whole encycl I think I have an old couple old encyclopedias, books on dragons, books on fish, all kinds of weird shit. Just a random amount of things I'm into. I love sharks. I've got a bunch of books on sharks, books on dinosaurs. Um, just random stuff that I can always pull from and go to if I want a reference or I want a picture of like a surface or a texture or something. I love having actual books in hand. Of course, with heavy as hell, I take up a lot of space, so I need a bigger house. Yeah, the digital brush, e-brush stuff blows me. If you're good at it, those guys are phenomenal, man. They can do a painting or they can do a, a mock-up and it looks freaking amazing. For me, I'm a computer idiot. I'm a caveman. I will never be able to use a ZBrush or a Wacom or whatever that stuff is. I'm pen and paper or brush and paint. The, the, the digital stuff, man, just befuddles me. So I don't have time for that crap. Patty says, I'm trying to figure out a monster I can make for my neighbor's palm fronds that fall all over my yard. I'm thinking the scarecrow might work. You can totally tuck palm fronds into a, make a tropical version of a, of a scarecrow. Use the palm fronds for um, his arms and stuff. That'd be awesome. Or you can strip them and use the actual individual fronds as stuff or weave them together. Weave them like a, like on Gilligan's Island, how they make tiki huts. Man, you can make a chest out of one. You can totally use palm fronds for a, for a scarecrow. Computer art and Ollie oil paint stuff. Yeah, oil paints, big dollars, man. Plus your canvases, you gotta have like gesso uh, to I think move the, the oil around. Then you gotta be able to seal them after like a month. And sometimes they take like a month to dry or something like that, if I remember. So oil painting, man, that's a little more high-end than I have time to mess with. <laughs> Lloyd's got a thumbs up, so he's home and he's got the hit. What's up, Ninja? I see, says the scallops are cool. Yeah, like I said, guys, these are going to be one of our next tutorials, probably after M8C. I'm going to show you guys how to make scallops. Man, it's going to be cool. Little, little rat nest hairs. Had a cat like that, had a heart attack. We're hoping he don't, because he's fat and he's like 11 years old. So, hopefully get another like 10 years out of him. That's not the one that was crying. It's Badger. He wants outside. Oh, the other cat, the white cat, he wants to go outside. He's an inside cat. He's got no claws. He ain't going outside. He likes to go roll in the damn cat that we plant. Thomas, Kitty Chonk. <laughs> 12, That's right. The sandwich Thomas makers are artists. Seems like every time I go in Subway, there's a whole new crew of artists and they're making my sandwich. They never have the same people twice when they go in there. Cat says, I see local lady uses the palm fronds to make all sorts of tiki heads turned upside down with spicing and up. Well, that's cool. You make little ha make little heads out of tiki fronds. Edson says, I got this double living in Colorado. <laughs> is that a blue frosty? This is like a Seagram's blue raspberry Italian ice. It's almost like a popsicle gene, but it's got booze in it, so... Booze makes everything better. We froze them last night, so now they're finally thawing out. Okay, here for the comments says, are Midwest Haunters Convention, and the, the same thing as Transworld, but renamed or are they different events? Uh, comments, they are totally two separate events. Transworld is a trade show that people come from all over the world to buy it's big dollars. Like, uh, they fill their theme parks, their haunted houses, they're, uh, you know, like your Disneyland, your attractions, stuff like that. People from all over the world come by there. That's a big dollar show. Uh, MHC is the same people put the same show on as MHC. It's a smaller show, different place. It's later on in the year. It's a summertime show. And it's more for actors and haunted houses and, and home haunters. It's not near the expense or the size of trans world. So they're two different shows by the same people, but totally separate shows with kind of different vibes. <laughs> See, Belinda says, I see YouTube has several videos of different things to use them for, Scarecrow or Nature, which would be cool. Now, you could totally make a witch out of palm fronds. You could make a whole cloak out of them for That'd be awesome, too, man. 
Up here we don't have any palm fronds, we got nothing tropical. We just got ice and hail. Gray's Anatomy, yeah. I like actually I have a copy of Gray's Anatomy that I use for looking up if I'm sculpting like a, a face or something like that. I like to refer back to that. And then uh, my buddy Frank and Pine sent me a, a book that he likes to use for like noses, eyes, and like um, when he draws and stuff like that. Uh, it's his favorite book, so he sent me a copy off of Amazon. I kind of I flipped through that once in a while too to kind of you know get human musculature and all that stuff and lengths of arms and all that. So I like peeking back on that book too. Gene says, "Yep, I'm total OG when it comes to that stuff myself. On my channel, I've shown sketch drawings that uh, led to the sculpt, etc. Oh, that's cool. Uh oh, Ninja's made some scalps before. Oh, that's cool, Ninja." Yeah, I'll put them up on YouTube or on uh, yeah, put them up on YouTube. Shit, it's been a minute since you've done a YouTube video. Show us how you made them. Yeah, Gene, what is your channel name? Is it just Gene Sanford? If we click on Gene Sanford, you got a bunch of videos, Gene. Edson says I've been kicking around the idea on doing voice work. I got a weird way of imitating voices. Hell, man, there's some people who make good money doing voice imitations. Imagine that girl who plays Bart Simpson. She's probably a freaking billionaire by now, man. I think that's like uh, like Foley artists who make all the sounds for movies. I think it's somewhere in there that's like the same kind of people or the same part of the union or something like that. He says, I'm getting old. I have the cold ones in the summer, though. <laughs> What's up, Dan? What's up, 13? Well, I'm glad you caught this stream, too, 13. 13, you going to take the year off this year or are you working on something? You got something like brewing over there. Because right about now, after MHC is over, almost everybody goes home and starts working on their home. They start gearing up their haunted house for the end of September, early October. So a lot of haunted houses are buying an MHC because they've got stuff there that you don't see anywhere else. And it's the last big show of the year, so people will buy stuff at the haunted house that nobody will know about when they walk through the door. So that was pretty cool. Going to 13th Gate was pretty awesome in Chicago. They had a lot of cool rooms, a lot of cool stuff. Their laser swamp was pretty freaking awesome. Um, 13th Gate was a was a site. It's pretty cool. Dan says we haven't stirred the pot in a while. <laughs> yeah, a little combo. We had a trans world about people buying early. <laughs> Vendors buying stuff. So when you walk in on Thursday morning, shit's already sold. Like, hey, you know, who the hell beat us to this stuff? You didn't even get a chance to buy it yet. But haunt season's now, so I'm sure it's about time to uh, stir the pot. <laughs> but I think MHC is probably the last show of the year, at least the last big haunt show, uh, unless you're doing like oddity shows and stuff like that. So I'm sure he's going to start hustling on their uh, displays and all that stuff. Voiceover actors, that's right, yeah. Have you ever seen the way they make sounds for Mortal Kombat? I have not, Ninja. I always thought it was like a Foley artist, you know, like they... They step on a bag of potato chips or they beat on a pop can or something like that, you know? Okay, so 13's going on a smaller scale this year. You guys got to look up 13 Skeletons on Facebook, man. Like his page. You'd be shocked and amazed at the stuff he pulls off. That man is insane, man. Gene says, got a friend that went to Japan, paid and does voices dubbing as the American guy voice. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh, like you've never done that. <laughs> 13 Skeletons says, I want to make a trip to Haunted Overload this October. I'll tell you where I want to, I want to go to Hell's Gate, man. They're in Chicago, and John LaFlamboy is something else. And that dude is a freaking evil, mad genius. I just love that guy, how he talks, how excited he is about his haunted house, all the detail he puts into it, that he builds rooms around actors and not vice versa. Um, the walkthroughs of Hell's Gate are freaking amazing. There's like a whole force you got to walk through to get to the damn building first, and he fucks with you the whole time. So I'm really hoping to gather up the girls and the family and throw them in the car and, and try to get out to Chicago this year and find Hell's Gate and, and do that one night, man. I'm really going to try and shoot out and do that. And I think I'm going to try and go back to uh, HHP and see if they've upped their game and got lights and stuff this year uh, versus last year, their first year being outside. Yeah, I'm sure it's crunch time for Lloyd. Lloyd's when Texas Haunters Convention. How much more time you got left? You probably screwed around in Florida too much, got sunburned, and went fishing, and played around too much. Now you're now you're down to the crunch time for a THC, huh? <laughs> mm. 
geniuses. I'm sure there's some badass stuff out there these days. Oh, yeah. And then right around now, like, uh, Home Depot is dropping a bunch of stuff. They've been putting the 12-foot skeletons out there. So I think they're doing that because there's such a rush for them the last two years. You know, people are insane over them 12-footers. Well, this year they're releasing, like, a 12-foot witch who's more like a smaller witch, which she's on a 12-foot stick or something <coughs> spinning around. And then they're doing, like, a 10-foot animated werewolf. Um, ninja... Ninja, what are they doing, like three props this year? The witch, the werewolf, and something else. Plus, they're probably bringing back the, uh, the pumpkin 12-footer. And then the, uh, the regular 12-footer. So they've got so much crap coming out, I think that they're trying to get people to buy their 12-footers now so they can buy another 12-foot version or 10-foot version of something else come Halloween time to get more money out of people. So it's actually pretty smart on their part. 16 to the 18. So, yeah, it's, you're, it's right on your heels. Make Scare Haunt. John LaFlamboy is a true storyteller. Totally agree. Totally agree, man. That guy is insanely freaking talented. In all his interviews, I really want to go there and experience the passion. That's exactly why. Uh, Make Scare Haunts, I've, I've seen the walkthrough. Um, I know the passion that guy has for his stuff. He's a theater guy, too. And, you know, you, you can you just, just see the walkthrough and why things are the way they are there. It's freaking amazing, man. Like, I, I like the fact that he put a slide in. A lot of people hit him for a slide. When I grew up, I used to go to a haunted house called, when I grew up in Hammond, it was called Reaper's Realm. And they had a slide. So I'm really looking forward to trying to get out to Hell's Gate this year so I can go down that slide too. And, and plus to see what else he puts in there. Because not only is it just like, you know, your, your haunted house stuff, but, you know, everything's there for a reason. Everything's designed for a reason with that guy. So uh, it'd just be really interesting to see what he comes up with, plus the whole way of just getting up there. Now that he's shut down Statesville and his other haunted houses, you know, he's leaving all those stories into just one. So if anybody can do it, man, it's that guy. And, and he can do it with grace and, and freaking awesomeness, man. Well, Lloyd got the 12-foot pumpkin footer for his son. That's cool. Although I heard his chest fills up with water. Eric Weber got his, and he, he sent me pictures like a couple days later. He's like, man, we got a rainstorm, and his chest is full of water, and the paint's coming off. So it's like, I don't know about that stuff, man. I, I just knew I couldn't leave it alone. If I got one, I'd be tearing it apart and trying to figure out how to waterproof it or make it stand up through snow or ice or something like that. I've just been like, the pumpkin ones are like 350 right? And the 12-footers are just 300 I think. 350 bucks, I'd be tearing that some bitch apart. Dan says, we missed Hell's Gate on our way home from North Carolina. Really wish we had an extra travel day so we could have stopped. That's right, you told me about that. Uh, we got an invite from John at Trans where we definitely go someday. Dan, if you can get it, man, go. Let's try and find that extra day. Man, that dude is something else, man. Uh, he is amazing. He's had haunted houses for like over 20 years. So uh, that guy is something else, man. Okay, so Ninja, Ninja works at, at uh, the Home Depot. And he says, the witch is 12-footer. Uh, the OG skeleton, which is a 12-footer. The pumpkin one are coming back. And there is the 10-foot werewolf, which is animated, uh, and the 15-foot reaper thing. I forgot about the reaper. I didn't know he was 15 foot or I thought he was 12. So, looks like Home Depot is teeing up to go after uh, Spirit Halloween this year and whoop their ass again. Because um, they've just been coming hard the last couple of years. It, it's crazy insane walking through there and see the stuff that they're putting out or you see it online. Uh... You know, we all know Spirit Halloween's going to have nine new clowns and they're going to throw in some other crap. So it's like, man, I, I literally think Home Depot is winding up to just piss all over Home Depot, man. <laughs> I start hearing from folks around September, hey, I need a zombie mask done. That's what summertime is for, to buy your mask at MHC or order them early so you don't have, so you have them by haunt season. <laughs> Hell's Gate seems so immersive, and in Ohio, it's just a scare your pants off kind of places. I want to see a show. Well, I'd love to go to Make Scare. I'd love to see Dent Schoolhouse. I, mean, I know Max works there, and they got some story wants there. And everybody, I never anybody really heard anybody say a bad word about Dent Schoolhouse. So if I was going to go to Ohio, and I think Ohio's got a shit ton of haunts too, I'd love to go to Dent and see what, the, what kind of show that they put on. But Hell's Gate, most definitely up here. You know, I, I want to go see that one. That's one I'm really dying to see. 13th floor was great. Went to 13th floor during MHC. That was awesome. But I know Hell's Gate, you know, it's just going to be spectacular. 
Oh, the pumpkin ones went up to 370 or 380, so they're not even 350 anymore. Last year, the, the 12 fur skeletons were 300. The pumpkin guys were 350. So now they're going up to 370, so they're jacking the price up on the pumpkin inferno guys. Gene says, I do lots of different accents, whatnot, depends on the situation. Hey, go to Hollywood. Go to Hollywood, Gene. See if you can become like a voice actor. Lloyd says, 50 shipping, taxes, 450 ish. Wow, almost 450 ish for the freaking pumpkin guy, man. I go pick his ass up, man, save some money. You got a truck or a pickup truck back, because those boxes are pretty damn big. And then Ninja says that most of his parts break down and store inside the, the, the skellies. So the box doesn't even really have to be that big. So that's kind of crazy. They make an oversized box. I don't know why they wouldn't just shove all the shit in there from the factory and, and save the space and have smaller boxes unless they just want to be like, make it look more impressive or something. Cat says, I hear you, April. Tell her how great you looked at MHC. Definitely an asset for your booth. Hells yeah, Cat. <coughs> they do not ship it to the store for free. Oh, yeah, Ninja. I'm sure they ship it for free to the store. But if you ship it to your house, it's probably another 50 bucks shipping or something like that. Home Depot owns Halley. Well, owns Halloween. <coughs> you know, like, I didn't even have a spirit Halloween last year. Uh, they normally have one by me. I had to drive, like, 45 minutes to, like, three towns over to find a spirit Halloween. And it was, in, like, in an old, um, it was a blockbuster, what the hell it was, but it had a really low ceiling. So they didn't even have the display up. They didn't have the pumpkin display on the conveyor belt, which I thought was really cool. Um, and they had... Maybe two animatronics going at one time. They had like uh, the they had one of the clowns going. They didn't have Shorty. Um, you know, I hate me some clowns, but I do love killer clowns from out of space. They didn't have Shorty. They really didn't have much. I was like, man, like I came all this way and they still didn't have shit. They didn't have the display out. So it kind of sucked, man. I was like, you know, and then you go to Home Depot and they got everything there. That my at least my Home Depot. I know other Home Depots are small. They don't put all this stuff. Mine must have had ten animatronics going off. They had aisles packed. I was walking in the display to grab the big pumpkins and pull them out. Uh, my Home Depot always delivers. I don't know if it's a different size Home Depot, like an Express or something like that, where some of them are smaller. I think Ninja said your Home Depot is smaller. They don't put a whole lot of stuff out. But my Home Depot puts a shit ton of stuff out. So I always try and get in there and get video to show you guys what all they have this year. Time for another blue. I think we're out of blues. I think we got a red, a white, and a blue in the house, I think. Gene's on his second pot of coffee. I can't drink coffee, man. In the morning time, night time, I cannot stomach coffee. No matter how much cream and sugar or whatever combination you put in there, it always tastes like shit to me. It's like, ugh, I just hate it. Spirit was so bad last year. You know, unfortunately, this little stuff I saw, I think I did one Spirit Halloween video from the one store I went to. Um, they're really not... You know, they did Buzzsaw, and I heard people say, oh, that was breaking, and Mr. Dark was breaking after, you like, one use. You know, which is typical for Spirit Halloween. You know, you're buying stuff that's made in China. It's got plastic gears in the motors, and, you know, if you put it outside or you look at it too hard, it's going to break within, like, six minutes. Um, I just don't know why they just don't beef up their shit. You know, I guess they figure, well, people are going to buy it anyways if we, if we build garbage and bullshit, so why even bother putting quality? You know, it's going to sell anyways, and we just don't care. We'll just spray paint the face and chuck it in the dumpster. April, did you get the con crud too? Hey, Rob's asking if you got the con crud too. Honey. Def, uh, not here, not hearing me. <laughs> Mick Scare says, they're all good. Dent, Factory of Terror, Haunted Schoolhouse, and Laboratory have a real Tesla coil in it. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I love Tesla coils. I mean, they can literally burn you in, into like ashes. Wells Town, Cedar Point, man, so the list goes on. Kind of great haunt. Yeah, Ohio's like like Haunt Central, man. They like back to back to back all over the damn place. I like to spend like just like the month of October there bouncing around every weekend and go to a bunch of them. Hey, Rob's that since you got the con crud too. 
Nothing. Blank look. Lloyd get the Loch Ness Monster Tree Fitty. You that goddamn Loch Ness Monster Tree Fitty? I love that episode of South Park, and that's so damn funny, man. What the hell is kind of crud? Sickness, you know, like a flug, flu, oh, a bug, sickness. Because he heard me coughing? I was choking on that stuff over there. Oh, she's, she's choking like, on no. food. What were you eating? Mexican food. We had Mexican food for dinner. She maybe she's choking on that. Oh, you're choking no, on. I was choking on, choking on that drink. Oh, the drink. Like metal. Drink it faster, baby. Drink it faster. Gene says, Dark Nook inspired me to finish a clay project in the living room. I like Dark Nook. I don't see him around as much. He doesn't uh, jump on to um, uh, Alan's live streams anymore, it seems like. Uh, and he does, like, skin wallets and stuff like that. Nook makes some pretty cool stuff. I've actually bought a couple of things from him before. But I know he was doing, like, the Gorilla Glue girl hair and stuff. So I don't know if he's doing that stuff or he's still doing projects. Um, I haven't seen him in a minute. I, I don't know what Nook's up to. He's a cool dude, though. Cat says, our spirit opened late and was not stocked very well. I think they were planning on online sales rather than walk-ins. You know, it's spirit Halloween. They have to expect that people have been waiting for that store to open for, like, you know, 10 months. So they need to get their shit together and get stuff on the floor because people are going to come through that door with dollar bills in their hands, buying everything in sight, you know, whether it's broken on the floor or not. So they should know better by now. Hey, Mimi, how are you? Ninja says, our store is so low volume, they sent us less stuff. Oh, that sucks, man. Gonna work on that after our hang time. That's cool, Gene, man. I know there's a bunch of stuff I want to sculpt, and I want to do, like, a, a big bat head for, um, like, a fog breather or, like, a bat head on a plaque. What's up, Chris? He says, if you see something at Home Depot, grab it when you see it or it's gone. That's true for some stores. If you see it, you better grab it now because when you come back next week, it might be gone. So I actually checked um, at home uh, Thursday. Nothing yet. It's all the 4th of July crap. So once that stuff goes away, boom, Halloween comes in. Um, last year I looked at my video. The first Halloween video I did last year was on the 15th of June. And it was Old Time Pottery. Old Time Pottery was before at home, which is shocking. So I've got one like they're like half a mile <laughs> apart, if that. So I went into Old Time Pottery on Friday, uh, yesterday. They had nothing yet. They had all the beach chairs and umbrellas and all that type of crap, but no Halloween yet. So I don't know if there's going to be a crap shoot. We're going to get late Halloween this year. We're going to get early Halloween. I don't know, but last year I think I did my first video on the 15th and it was Old Time Pottery. So nothing yet at, at home or at Old Time Pottery, but I'm sure it's coming soon. So you guys don't want to be on that. That's true, Gene. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> Dan says, we hired a theater student to help train our actors. We have a pretty cool backstory. Plus, we have 10 in-your-face actors this season, plus about 20 to 30 volunteer actors. That's cool. Hopefully, you guys can manage them. Um, Dan, I'm curious. Do you guys have kids that are 18? Do you have to be 18 or older to work at your haunt? Do you guys have a rule where it's like you have to be 18 or above and a background check to work at the haunt? And I ask about this only because of the Bloodshed Brothers and all the shit that was going out there in Cali. I'm curious if some of these haunts, like Mimi, I know Mimi's young, um, she's underage, and she works at a haunt. So I'm curious that, like, the people that you guys have in there, do they all do background checks for your haunt? And is anybody who's under age 16 allowed to work there? And do they have, like, restricted hours? They can only work, like, certain nights for so many hours and stuff like that, you know? I'm kind of curious about that. Edson says, hello, Mrs. Cobwebs. Edson says, anytime I've got to go to the junkyard, I stuck up on wiper motors. Rear wiper motors are nice for back and forth motion, like a head turn. Oh, yeah, like a third uh, uh, a third wiper in the back window. I don't get any chance to go to the junkyard anymore. My junkyard over here kind of sucks. They don't want to let anybody in and look around for shit because of uh, insurance purposes, like a car might fall on you or something. Ninja says, I haven't caught Alan's lives in so long. It's time he just dodges where I can hang out. <laughs> it's been iffy, man, with with Transworld back to back, and then you know, obviously he takes orders at Transworld, and he's got to make the stuff, and he's got his crew there making stuff. Um, and then MHC comes up, and he's got his monster museum in the middle of all that. He's pretty damn busy. It's hard for him to find time. And when he can, 
He's got that jinky internet that he's always saying, hey, you know, the internet's out tonight or he's having storms because Texas is batshit crazy. So it's kind of hard for him to jump on anymore. You know, we haven't seen like a YouTube Wednesday in a while. So I'm sure he's just freaking <laughs> rolling. With it. Probably, it'll probably level off pretty soon here. Well, you know, actually, I don't know because he'll be getting ready to go ramp up for Dark Hour. So um, if he can knock out Trans World Orders and MHC Orders, he'll probably be showing us what he's going to do for, for Dark Hour. So he might actually be able to have a little bit more time. But I think because it's Trans World, uh, Trans World, the Monster Museum, MHC, then he's got Texas Horrors Convention, then Dark Hour, because everybody starts building now, so... Probably pretty soon Ninja will be back on. I think he was on Thursday or Wednesday or something like that. I was able to jump on a little bit and see everybody. Gene says, yeah, I notice he hasn't been on uh, Alan's set, but I haven't... I still hung out with Alan's crew for a spell. Started dating this gal seven months ago. Oh, that's why you're busy, Gene. <laughs> Lloyd says spirit clowns are stuck in China. They're either in China or they're on container ships on the way over here. <laughs> or they're floating off of a long beach for six months waiting to get off the ship. <laughs> Mimi says, I like to save money, but I really wanted some spark gloves. Ordered some from HHP the other day, and I'm excited to see how they turn out. Hopefully they're good, man. I'm sure Alan Justin makes the same ones that Alan does, because he pretty much makes everything Alan does. John says, Joanne's Fabric has Halloween print material in stock. I did see that, John. I saw somebody was walking through the store showing all the Halloween print. It's probably going to be another month and a half before they get actual props in. And then when I was at Old Time Pottery, I saw that uh, they were having, like, vinyl slabs for sale. Uh, I, I didn't know they did this, for, I guess, to, like, cover, like, um, I don't know, like, outside furniture or something like that. You get like three yards for 15 bucks, $14.99. They have like browns, tans, some reds, some with like some like marble painting on it. And I thought, man, I should probably take a picture of this and ask Rob O'Brien, is this a good price for this shit? Like it's a hundred and something inches long by, I don't know, I think it's like, I think it's three yards. It's three yards of vinyl, uh, marine vinyl, I think, for 15 bucks. And they got a limited amount of colors and stuff. So I mean, cool, like a cool, like, a tabard or jerkin or armor or you know you cover something or put it on plywood or something like that. Yes, my baby rocked that dress. All of them. Make scare Hunt says my starter just went on my Jeep today, so I'll be hitting the junk air money. I'm not even mad about it because I'll get some motors. <laughs> it's like I'll get a starter, then I'll get a wipe. Any more up here, they don't want you in the bone yards. They're getting uh, more strict about people coming in. Um because, you know, they buy a used car. Most junkers, you know, they'll do $200, $300 on a used car. They'll sell a hood, a door off it, or something like that for two or $300, and the car is damn near paid for, and they get a couple of parts off. And then they're stingy about selling a, a starter or whatever, and they're making, like, $10,000, or they're making five grand off of a $300 car, but they act like they're broke. So, screw the junkers. Just take the shit, put it in your bucket, and take it out the door. Or, you do what I do when I was a kid. You go over to the fence, you toss it over the fence, and then you drive around the back and go pick up all the shit you threw over the fence. <laughs> Edson says, as far as I heard, Alan doesn't really have any downtime anymore. Well, so he's pretty busy. You know, he's a director at Dark Hour. He does all the trade shows, a bunch of trade shows, too. Uh, at least three trade shows back-to-back -back at Scarborough Fair. So I get it. He's pretty busy. So uh, I, I get it, man. Just for me and Vic doing MHC was crazy. You know, I get, like, the time, like I said, like, our heads are so far up our asses trying to get all this stuff done. And... And looking good and make sure it's going to last if somebody buys something. And trying to get it gathered up on the van or on the truck, on the trailer. Get it there. Get it open, display. Get the get the, the facade up. It's it's draining, man. It's a, it's a pain in the ass. It's like you, you're you literally up every spare minute you can working on something, tweaking on something, trying to glue something. So when you get home later, you can go back and do the next step on it. It's uh, it's time consuming. It's it's rough, man. I, I, I get it now. I totally get it. I'm sure he's probably freaking exhausted, too. I think you're right, Lloyd. There is another monster camp because I mean, he's done like in between the three shows, um, plus the monster museum, uh, and then getting ready for dark hour. He's been doing. I think he did two monster camps, so he's definitely burning a candle at both ends. 
Okay, so Kat says, Joanna's has fabric, Halloween fabric year round. The new stuff's coming in now. We do Christmas in July. First and it's Halloween stuff will start to arrive. Well, that's cool. Okay, so Dan says, 16 or older. We will do background checks on anyone I don't know. We also have management roaming the haunt at all times. Um, some actors are younger, but their parents are required to scare with them. That's awesome. I love that set of rules. 16 or older. If you've got a youngin, you got the actor, there's a parents with them. That's awesome, man. You guys are freaking awesome. That's cool, man. Because the shit that happened at, uh, with the Bloodshed Brothers, that's some bullshit, man. That's, that's insane, you know. Um, I, hope they, they, I hope they bury them guys under the fucking jail for that shit. Especially that one long-haired guy, you know, for everything that he's doing to the 16-year-olds. Put him under the jail, man. Gene says, I think he's up to about three workshops during the year. <laughs> Probably or more, or more coming. Makes your head says, ours pulls it for you, and it's so cheap, I'm not willing to let my old gal Jeep die. You know, makes your haunt because I restore cars. Jeeps retain the most value because people always fix them up. It's the most customizable vehicle on the earth. Um, that's why the resale value is so high. Even the old ones, you can fix the frames on them when they crack and break, or you just reframe it. Put lifts on them, tops on them. They make so much shit for Jeeps. They're crazy, man. Um, I'm not a Jeep guy. I've never had one. I've never been a Jeep guy. I've worked on them. I've put some parts on them before. But it's like Jeep people, just like Mopar people, are a different kind of people. Um, to me, they just ride rickety and they kind of bounce around. It's like being in a, almost like driving a goddamn dune buggy or something. So I'm not a Jeep guy, but uh, hey, more power to the people are because they got really good resale value to them. And you could take a shitbox old Jeep that's, you know, down on its, you know, little, with a little four liter straight six in it, you know, 200,000 miles, you probably still get four grand for the damn thing. So, you know, Jeeps, not a bad way to go. People always want them. They never go out of style. Rob says, I don't know why I didn't pick up a couple of your scones while I was there in person. Because <laughs> there's only so much room in the damn car to get home, Rob. I had people like, I'm going on a plane. I can't take this shit with me. Totally get it. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to buy anything from you this year. I think I think April did most of the shopping this year. So when I do my haul, my stuff's going to be small. And then April's going to have to do her stuff. So it's it's really weird vending because it's like you're like a dog, like chained up in the yard. It's like, you want to go play and like... You know, it's like, man, you're, it's like you're on a leash because if you turn your back and somebody has a question, they may walk off or they may get pissed off. It's like, hey, I tried talking to Kyle. was about his damn tiki and the asshole wasn't even there. Or he was, you know, talking to somebody else in the aisle or something like that. So it's, it, was, it was really kind of a weird flip side for me and Vic this year. It's like, hey, let's go over there and check it out. So, but every time we turn our back, man, somebody's like, hey, you know, I got a question. Or is this yours? Or is this Vic's? Or whatever. So we got some work to do for next year. Mimi, what happened with Bloodshed Brothers? Google Bloodshed Brothers, Mimi, it'll pop right up, man. The guy got 236 years or something like that. Then one of the brothers uh, is going to be probably doing some time. So it's crazy. Google Mimi, it'll pop up. It'll tell you the whole story. All the charges that happened with them, guys. Gene, that's totally a cool idea. Get the parents involved. Should be anyway. That's amazing, man, to have mom and dad right on site or mom or dad plus the, the kids. So if the kids get out of line and they're doing something stupid, you have mom and dad yelling and whoop their ass right there at the haunt. Mimi, they haven't been on for a while. Um, I know Vic watched them, subs to them. I don't. I've never been a big Bloodshed Brother fan. I know they do, like, Christmas 2 or something like that. Um, but they were wiped. All their social media accounts are gone. I think they're off of Instagram. They're off Facebook. They're off YouTube. They are gone. They were pulled. So they are ghosts now on the Internet. Ninja said, to quote Corey Taylor on a the situation, there's not enough pain in the world for them. <laughs> Oh, freaking Slipknot. Gene says, I didn't ask who or what happened. Uh, never know, often better not. Eh. Lloyd says, someone come to the Texas Hornets and mention to buy something from me. Hopefully people aren't too broke to buy them. You know, Lloyd, this year was definitely uh, more of a tire kicker situation. People were looking because fuel was so damn high. You know, the tickets were cheap for the event, but, you know, people who flew or they had to drive up this way, uh, you know, are not used to spending that much money on gas. $500 going to an event on gas or something like that, you know. That, that could have been their whole spending budget for the weekend, so I get it, man. I kept my prices as low as I could for this show and told people, like, on Monday, they're going up to pay for all the materials and stuff I put in there. Uh, but I'm going to give people a break just because of fuel, man. Fuel is ridiculous. You know, cost of living is up on everything. You know, eggs, milk, bread, every damn thing. Um, 
So a lot of people were kind of picky about what they bought this year. Totally get that, totally understand, man. So hopefully next year, if, if we can open our own pipeline up and use our own goddamn gas, then prices will come down like normal times. And then people will be able to afford to go to work and get groceries and feed their kids and hopefully buy formula and stuff like that. Dan says, gonna hit the hay, going to gonna hit the hay soon, early work in the morning. Good night, take care. Good night, Dan. Take care of ours. Thanks for stopping by, man. I love your guys' haunt rules, man. That's awesome. 13 says, was the, was the MHC the first event you and Vic ever did together? Yes, sir, 13. Um, Vic's never vended yet. I vended last year at another show. It was a bizarre, bizarre. But MHC was really our first big show and our first show together. And then next year we'll be back again together. And then hopefully we'll have the weird kid uh, with us too. We'll have Dave with us, we hope. We're going to try and get it where Dave can fly in and because and, O'Hare is like right there. And since the event's going to be at the same building next year, we'll probably be at the same motel. Uh, Dave can jump on the plane, get off at O'Hare, take a shuttle bus right to the motel, and then boom, he's there at the show with us. <coughs> oh, Rob's acting. Their parents, actors too, they are always within the arms reach of their kids. I hope so, man. That's awesome. If, if you know, mom and dad brings the kids into act and, and they're basically, you know, watching over the kids, that's awesome. I love that idea. So I think, man, if, it's, if that's not the case, if mom and dad ain't there, you should be 18 to work at a haunt. Yeah, maybe the details are disgusting, man. They're, they're fucking animals, and they should be on national TV. Baby says, well, I wanted to come back, get the jacket and umbrella. I ran out of time. I was running with the chicken with my head cut off. Yeah, because vending is weird, man. You are tied to your booth. He can, he can ship. Rob can ship. Lloyd says, one more bad year. I will pull out till 2024. Is that Texas Haunters Convention, Lloyd? I think Texas Haunters Convention seems like it's sort of ramping up. Like, Nightmare Makers won't do MHC because it's kind of too far, too much money. Uh, Trans World's freaking expensive. So they're most definitely going to do Texas Haunters Convention because it's right in their backyard. So that's awesome for them. But it's like, now you've got to kind of like pick and choose your shows. Like, okay, so if I do Trans World... Am I going to be able to afford another show this year if I don't make decent money there or be able to pay my bills at Transworld for, for vending, you know? So that's kind of kind of crazy. I'm sure that's hard on vendors, too, especially if you have small stuff. You're going to have a couple of big-ticket props or big-ticket items to, you know, pay your bills for a show. You know, your electric, if you've got air. I mean, literally, I think air for Quinn at MHC was $300 and something. dollars. Electric was $270 for your booth. You know, then your seven hundred dollars for ten. So you could literally get two thousand dollars for your booth MHC to have twenty feet in air and electricity. So you got to make at least two thousand dollars to get in the red, or plus your hotel and your gas and travel and everything else just to get in the black. So you got to have a couple of big dollar props. And like most people at MHC won't spend two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars on a big prop. That's more of a trans world thing. So you really got to be careful, like, you know, as a, as a vendor, like, what you're bringing to a show. If you're bringing all high-end props, like, yeah, I show up and I got six animatronics, you know, and they're all $3,000, you're probably not going to sell it to an MHC. Or if you are, it's going to be to a haunted house, or it should be sold before you get there, you know. So you got to kind of be careful. you got to have some small stuff, you know. Uh, Lloyd says, yeah. You can keep a cot in the booth for Dave. That's what we said. We said we could have put Dave behind one of our wing walls. To roll a toilet paper over the wall, a couple of candy bars, and he can come out Saturday morning and vend with us. Rob, I'm going to try to do, try Texas here. Pretty much the same drive to Texas as Illinois. Oh, that's cool. I've never been to Texas Haunters Convention. It seems like the last couple of years I've seen videos on it. It seems to be like growing, getting bigger and bigger. Um, I'm curious to see like how big, you know, because that's more like a Midwest, you know, trans world and and um, and. Uh, MHC since it's Rosemont, Chicago, or Midwest shows, but like Texas is like a middle of the country show. So it seems like, you know, more people could come to Texas from the surrounding area and really kind of grow that show. Lloyd says, okay, City has been advertising one. Well, at least they're advertising for it. How expensive are the booths at, uh, at Texas Haunters Convention, Lloyd? 
Are they super pricey there? They make you pay for electric and Wi-Fi and all that individual stuff. I'll tell you what's crazy. So after Transworld, or after MHC, me and Vic were tearing down. Everybody was tearing down. Uh, Rich, the show uh, supervisor, he puts on the show. Uh, he came and talked to me and Vic. And he's like, hey, you know, so when you guys watch the Distortions booth this year at MHC, they had a TV going with... Um, with uh, like their demo on, the, the big TV on a screen, they had a little growing up going. So when uh, Distortion shows up, their pallets show up, they all thought it. Ed and Marsh has set up the whole booth. He doesn't have 20 people showing up, setting up stuff. Ed and Marsh has set that whole damn booth up. Ed sat in a chair and programmed the TV. He set up the props. He set up the, the, the big thrash or mutant guy. I mean, he didn't have a team of people there. Ed's a super down-to-earth guy. So I don't want you guys thinking, oh, yeah, Ed probably just shows up, walks into the last second, everything's pretty. Hell no. Ed and Marsha do the work, man. They are freaking awesome, amazing people. So, you know, Ed set up the animatronics. He set up the booth. Uh, you know, he signed stuff. Uh, talked to people. So the TV, when you go there, you go to the exposition uh, thing, and you rent TVs or you rent a carpet or whatever. They left the TV there. At the end of the show, they packed their animatronics. They got the hell out of Dodge. So there's a TV there on a stand. Rich, the promoter, comes over and says, hey, you guys want a TV? Like, for what? And he goes, to keep? And he's like, I don't need it. He goes, I just want to stand. He said, but the TV, he goes, I got like 30 in inventory. He goes, so we don't need a TV. We just want to get rid of it. I'm like, you want to get rid of a brand new TV? I think I saw the box out on the landing behind where Vic's trailer was. I'm like, did they just pull that TV out of the box? So they rented a TV. It was a brand new TV they stuck on a stand. And then they left it behind? And Rich just wants to get rid of the TV because he's got 30 in stock. So they must throw shit away after shows like that, man. Like, that's crazy. So Vic got a free TV, went over there, we took it off the stand, like, we popped it off, unscrewed, took the spacers off, and uh, Vic got a free TV for going to uh, MHC. So that's pretty crazy, man. Like, what you pay for some of these services that you rent at trade shows or what other bigger companies do. But yeah, like I said, man, Ed set the whole booth up himself, he tore down himself. Uh, just him and Marsha, man. So, like, just, that's, I, I love seeing that, man. Like, you know, he's a phenomenal guy. Hardworking to the core, man. It, it's like, I, I just love seeing that, man. That's true, Cat. Ed probably could set it up in his sleep. Uh, Trans really probably has some help because he got some big-ass props there. But MHC, MHC last year was the same damn thing. Ed set up, Ed tore down. We even offered to help. Me and Vic went over and said, Ed, there's nothing we can do for you. You know, we were helping Quinn um, set up and tear down. And we asked Ed, he's like, oh, we just about got it now, you know. So, um, same thing. Smaller shows, Ed and Marsha do all the work, man. They don't have no team, no crew. It's Ed and Marsha setting up and tearing down, man. That's It's all on them. About tree fitty for a 10 by 10. They have smaller and bigger. Do not have to pay for uh, do you have to pay for electric? It's about sixty bucks. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not bad. Um, if you do electric in a booth, a ten by ten for three sixty, you could probably make that back pretty fast. So for MHC, if you were doing a ten by ten and electric, that'd have been damn near a thousand dollars. Of course, we got booth numbers late. The sooner you know your booth number, I knew mine on Friday. That's when I found out that the booth numbers were there. You got to have your booth number to order the electronics uh, to your booth. When I called on Friday, I could not get a hold of that damn lady at the exposition services. I didn't know it was like a portal or whatever that you had to go through and order online and put in a shopping cart with whatever other shit you wanted. So I tried calling her on Saturday, nothing. Nobody picked up the phone. Monday, I finally got through, and she's like, oh, yeah, you got to go to this portal that's on resexpo.net or order some shit. So by the time I got there, I had missed the window. I was like a late, the late buyer or something like that. 270 for electric. It's like, God damn it, man. So... That part sucks. I guess at Transworld, Lenny and Beth said, uh, Lenny and Beth said, electric was only $70 at Transworld. Of course, your booth is $1,500 for a 10 by 10, so a little bit of give and take there. But that's not bad for Texas Hunters Convention. I mean, if you bring a couple of $100 props, you can pretty much pay your bills for the show. So that's not bad. And it seems like more and more people are jumping on that THC, so that's pretty cool. So hopefully in the next couple of years, that'll be a bigger show. You know, it'll start to really grow. Uh, that'd be awesome. Because I, I, I like seeing the videos of that show. And then uh, in early, no, not early next year. Trans World's the early show next year. Fear Expo's in March next year. And Vic's going to be attending that one. So I'm going to have to really hustle to get my shit together. Make sure we get all our stuff. Anything he doesn't sell at Fear Expo, he can bring to MHC um, for 2023 next year. 
Yeah, so we're gonna be busy, man. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a banger year for us for sure. Thirteen says I love the Dick Van Dyke uh, haunt. Ed did. Oh yeah, um, that was like a couple of years ago, a year before last. Last year, uh, Ray Villafane was there. Uh, Dick Van Dyke, man, that dude's old school, man. Awesome haunter. He's always been into Halloween. I've known that for a bunch of years now. I think it's freaking great. And the kids have no damn idea who he is, man. They have no idea they're living next to the, to, uh, to Dick Van Dyke, you know. I remember watching this show when I was a kid, and you know, he's a Mary was a Mary Poppins. He was dancing around on that one. Uh, but the Dick Van Dyke show, I remember watching that as a kid, man. Like, that's crazy. But those kids are clueless. I just love that, you know, he does the whole theatrical thing for me. He does a big show for him. Uh, Dick Van Dyke, he's a true gangster bastard, man. I love that old dude, man. That's awesome. Cat says, the TV would be a good idea for you showing all your black light stuff and some of your home things like witches and cauldrons set up on these. You know, we had thought about that, Cat. We Vic's like, hey, we could, you know, show our videos, our YouTube videos and like loop them or something like that. Put them on a stick or some technological bullshit thing I don't know anything about. Um, but we got a better idea for next year. Plus, just having to hassle the TV and build a frame for it and then, you know, it's electronic. We'll probably drop the damn thing. We're end up putting a hammer through it and getting pissed off. Uh, we've got a better idea for next year that's going to keep people hanging around our booth. So uh, leave it to us. I think I think we got a bunch of tweaks in mind because we've kind of taken everybody's feedback about the booth, and it's like we kind of step back and look. It's like, okay, when we watch the videos back. What do we see here? What's our issues? What's our problems? You know, so we made a bunch of tweaks. I've already got a little map drawn up for next year. So we're going to start. We've already been working on it. When Vic comes up here, we're going to work on it some more when he comes to pick up his truck. So I always have the THC videos. That's cool, man. That's awesome. I, li I like watching them just to see who's all there and what new stuff's there, like what new vendors are there. Love the Dick Van Dyke show. Hell yeah, I remember watching that as a kid, man. I used to watch it like almost every night, like 8 o'clock when it came on. And I think I'm finally caught up. I'll be damned. But yeah, like... Ed and Marshall are so phenomenal. I, I think they're like the pinnacle of what everybody who's vending should want to be. I mean, they come in, they set up their own stuff, and Ed is just like, he is the most gracious man. I mean, he talks to everybody. He's, he's like, you've, you've known him for years, man. He is freaking awesome. Um, I think if you're going to be in the haunt industry, every single person who's remotely interested in the haunt industry should aspire to be like Ed Edmonds. I mean, that guy is like the pinnacle of Halloween, man. If he's not a cornerstone, then I don't know what the hell is, man. Um, you know, plus he makes awesome stuff, too. But just just a super gracious guy with, with everybody, man. So, you know, it, it's I've been lucky to see him when I met him at MHC last year. I saw him at Transworld. And then saw him again this year. Um, it, it's just a great show to go to, man. And plus, it's a family. You can bring the kids. There's costume contests. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the back of the hall. I couldn't see, but I heard it. Um, it's like, man, you know, it's like, I'm just dying to get back there for next year. I, I wish I could, like, attend next year, but uh, me and Vic, we're going to vent, man. We're going to throw it on again next year. We're going to really try and turn it up and really shock the shit out of the other vendors because most of the big boys who come, you know, they're delivering their stuff. They don't put a whole lot of work into their booth. They just keep their curtain up, their sign hangs on, or they just start laying out their props. But uh, me and Vic don't really roll like that, so next year should be pretty interesting for what we have in mind. You're typing with gloves. Lloyd, why do you have gloves on? Is it because you got the hip? You don't want to pass it to the wife or something like that? You got the Rona? Did you get the shot? The Rona shot? What up, Nick? I just mentioned you earlier about going to Trans World. Oh, man. Dick Van Dyke, he's a total Halloween guy for like 50 years, man. He's freaking awesome. Did anyone get to go through the haunted house? Uh, if you mean 13th floor, Rob, yes, I went. The Chicago Haunt Builders little walkthrough, I did not. Uh, 13th floor is great, man. And in fact, I got to it. We went to it for free. Um, I didn't know you had to sign up for it, and you get a bracelet for it, because I had, like, two bracelets. I, I, don't have, I think I had six bracelets on for the show for different things. Um, so after the show was over on Saturday, they were running buses from the front of the convention center down to 13th Gate, which is, like, half a mile down the road. So we went and stood in line. And the lady's walking around. She's like, hey, you guys got your bracelets? I'm like, lady, I got all kinds of bracelets. Pick one. And she's like, do you have the one for this tour, the purple and white one? I'm like, no, nope, I didn't get it. She goes, did you register? I'm like, no, I didn't register. I'll just pay cash when I get there. She's like, okay, that works. So we get on the bus. We were behind Quinn and Jen. 
And uh, we go down the haunted house. I'm like, well, I guess you pay when you get in science. We're outside. They had food for you and drinks and uh, and stuff. And we were waiting in line. The scare actors, the queue line actors were messing with us and stuff. So we go inside and it's like, okay, we take a little picture. I'm like, oh man, you know, like where's like, I'm assuming like somebody's going to come out and collect money or collect, you know, the your little be a paid desk there or something like some kind of kiosk or something like that or something like that. Because you're behind the building, whatever, where the entrance is at. And then they put you outside the room that says, like, Dunning on it. You're like, okay, so I guess, like, we're inside the actual haunt. Like, um, I, I'm like, I, I don't know where you really pay at or whatever. So we went through the whole haunted house. We pop out of the other side in the gift shop so you can buy T-shirts or your picture or whatever like that. So for us, uh, uh, 13 floor is actually free. We meet April and Willow went over there for free. <laughs> so I didn't get to go sign up for it. You know, they were so busy vending and running around so crazy. So the haunted house was free and it was awesome. <laughs> And you can get free pizza and beers and, and drinks and stuff too. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that's right, with the flying car, with the wings that fold off from one of the uh, rocker panels. That's right, Rick. G met four, Uncle Forty once? Really? The little walkthrough. Now, I did not make it through there. I had, uh, I showed it on my video of the Chicago Haunt Club builders, but there was nobody in there. And I didn't want to, like, walk through. I, I just felt like, eh, maybe I shouldn't, you know, because you don't really film in haunts or anything like that. So I thought, even though my video was going to come out after M8C, I was just like, well, I probably shouldn't walk in there and show people, you know. So I, I, I showed the outside of it, but I didn't show the inside of it. So I never had to walk through. Did Savage go to the little haunted house? Maybe. Hey. Did Savage go to the haunted house at uh, M8C? What? Did Savage go to the haunted house at MHC, the Chicago Haunt Builders no, house? No, I didn't go through. Yeah, I guess Savage didn't even go through. I didn't see it. It was a big black square box right towards, right back in front of the stage area. Always wanted to see his collection and Bob Burns. Oh, I bet. Nick says, thrilled to hear you guys are venting again. I'm really going to try to make it to MAT next year. Nick, man, it was awesome, man. I, you know, Milwaukee was freaking great. This year was awesome. Of course, we were kind of chained to our booth. Um, I don't think I'm going to do Transworld next year because it's February, um, and that's going to suck. It's going to be cold. Um, and just to spend thousands there, we're gonna, me and Vic are most definitely going to be at MAT next year. So I'd rather spend that money towards supplies for stuff for MAT. So I doubt I'm going to be at Transworld. Um, definitely not a family trip if I go, because that's going to be expensive as hell, man. And I really put that money towards MHC to make sure I have a good showing there. I didn't get to go. I fell asleep. <laughs> it was so tired. We were in shit kicker boots the whole show. We got back to the hotel. We went and had our drinks. Because like at the, at the Embassy Suites, man, you get like two free drinks in the bar at night. So everybody's in there sort of like lounging and schmoozing, having a drink, you know. After the show is over, the haunted house tours to pick up at seven, and the Vic's like, "I'm gonna go upstairs and get these boots off for a second. Me and Quimmer call him, says, "Hey, where are you at? We're going to the haunted house." Heard nothing. Like he's asleep, and I know he passed out. We get back, and he's like, "Hey, uh, I'm up." I said, "As soon as I laid back, I woke up." Like Vic slept right to the haunted house, like probably Dave would have. Vic says, "I hear Mr. Simon Mohan has a huge display." I don't know. Gene says, yep, I've been lucky enough to have cool parents when I was coming up. I lived near L.A. back then. Oh, man, you probably had everybody back there. That sounds like a Steve Catronio's story, living in SoCal and getting to work for the the guy who, you know, worked on uh, Freddy's Dead. It was a part four. Um, you know, Steve at Grimwood Hollow, man. That, you know, getting, you know, your first movie when you're 17 years old is, you know, uh, is Phantasm 2. And then, you know, The Abyss, and, you know, man, he's had his hands in some freaking great stuff, man. It's like, just to be in that place at that time, you know, in the right place at the right time, wanting to be a special effects kid. I mean, what a killer, killer legacy Steve has, man. Gene says, I, I've met and thanked many of those old prop makers and actors. That's cool, you know, it's like... I see the, like, the con circuit, you know, where they end up at the, the conventions, you know, like, I saw Lance Henriksen at this, uh, was it, not Monstrous Palooza, the one before that, uh, that everybody went to. It was in Texas somewhere, and I thought, 
How is it not like 600 people at that guy's table? He's fucking amazing, man. He was in Near Dark. He was in Millennium. He was an Alien. And, and people want to go see the Scream people. Like, who the fuck are the Scream people compared to Lance Henriksen, man? Like, he, he should have been flooded, man. Like, I, I didn't understand. I, I don't understand the whole autograph thing. And I feel bad for those guys. You know, like, Hollywood's not calling anymore. So, you know, Pumpkinhead, that's another, you know, great Lance Henriksen movie. Um... Uh, you, you just feel bad for them. It's like, you know, they're like, they're, you feel like they're underappreciated anymore for movies they did, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago and whatnot, you know. Um, I, I'm just not really big into the whole autograph thing, like seeking autographs. And you, I see some of these guys like there and they're almost hounding and pandering to them, like telling them like a 15 minute story about some mask they made or something like, you know, and it's like, dude, they got a line of people behind you, man. Just, you know, grab your autograph and go. Don't be getting weird and asking them weird fucking questions and making them feel awkward at their own show that, you know, they're living off of autograph money and stuff. It's like, man, just, you know, get in there, take your minute, you know, give your compliment, tell them your favorite movie, and then, and then bang out bang out on the road. I don't try and hang out and harangue them people, man. It's like, I always feel bad for them. I feel like, oh, man, like, by the time we get to the hotel last night, the, the next night, they're probably like, oh, my God, this asshole wouldn't get away from me. You know, he kept on trying to grab me or hold me or touch me or ask me weird, awkward questions about what my favorite socks are and shit, you know. So I'm just not a big fan of the con thing. I've been to Comic-Con before. Uh, I got to met Ernie Hudson, and uh, I I don't even think I asked for his autograph. I walked up on him, and he's like, hey, how you, you know, how, how you doing, sir, whatever you know. And I'm like, what was it like to work with Brandon Lee and the Crow? And he goes, I swear to God you were going to ask me a Ghostbusters question. I'm like, nope. I said, I said, what was it like working with Brandon Lee and the Crow? You know, I actually met James Elbar there, and I had him sign my Crow DVD. Um He's a quiet guy, a different guy. But I think that's like the only autograph I got there. And then my buddy got Tom Savini's autograph. He didn't even know who Tom Savini was. And I'm like, dude, how have you not seen, you know, uh, uh, Tom's been in such a million movies um, and, and Rick's past now, you know. But uh, I was like, don't you remember from Dust from, from dusk Till Dawn, like with the Six Shooter? Do you want to play with the Six Shooter from Dust Till Dawn? Um, you know, Night Riders, I always loved him as Night Riders. He's like, you saw Night Riders? I'm like, dude, I love you as Morgan Le Fay and Night Riders. That was such a fucking great movie. And, and, uh, and, uh, what's his face? Ed, um, uh, oh, the blonde guy who's crazy in every damn movie. Uh, I love that movie. But Tom Savini's, you know, he's been in so many damn movies, you know, or, or worked did behind the scenes for so many movies. Love did it. Did you see the Ghostbusters van go by today? No, uh, there was a Ghostbusters van. There was a and a Ghostbusters van. True Maybe Ernie Hudson's driving it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I feel awkward about going to cons for autographs. It's, it's kind of like a... I, I just feel bad for them people, you know? So I just want to try and get in and then get out. Let's see. Living on a Bluff says, If you haven't seen his YouTube video, check out Cyclone Jack Double H, Stirring Witch. Halloween yard haunt prop. Cyclone Jack Double H. I'll have to look that up. That's one I haven't heard of. Gene Saffer. When I met Roddy McDowell, he was famous for Fright Night, and I bought the 1969 paperback of the planet. You know, I love Fright Night. That's one of like my favorite. It's almost like a crossover movie because it's like a werewolf and a vampire. I, I love Fright Night. That's one I, I just watched it. I think I've watched it twice this year, like on Amazon Prime. With Chris Sarandon, uh, Roddy McDowell, the kid from Inside Herman's Head, uh, Evil Ed, uh, Amanda Bears. It's such a great movie, man. The guy who plays the werewolf was a, was a bad guy in a bunch of movies in the 80s. I love that freaking movie. I think it's so well done. I don't want to watch the remake with Colin... What's his face? Farrell? Yeah. Uh, I love that movie so much, man. That's such a classic, great horror flick that still stands up to this day, man. Now, that's a guy I would probably ask for an autograph, Chris Sarandon. But mostly because he's in The Princess Bride, too. And he was so damn good in The Princess Bride. But I love me some Fright Night, man. 13 saying, Keith, would you ever build a small special request prop? Absolutely, 13. I take commissions. Um, or I've had people like with Ray. So, uh, Ray Mitchell, he liked my sconces, but his columns were like uh, 10 inches wide. And he's like, yeah, Keith, I want two of your sconces. I'm going to put them on your, uh, I'm going to put them on my, my uh, sconces going to either side of my driveway. And I'm like, well, before you order these things, I'm like, how, how big are your columns? He's like, oh, they're like 10 inches wide. And I'm like, oh, Ray, I said, my sconce is going to hang over a half inch on either side. I'm like, you don't want a pair of these, man. Uh, 
not for your columns, it's not going to work. Because the kid's going to walk by, you know, coming out of the driveway, and if you got a big crowd, they're going to bump with their arm, and that thing's going to go flying off because you're going to have an overhang. And he said, if I can make them smaller, and I'm like, well, damn, yeah, I make them. Why, why can't I make them smaller? Because they're separate rings how I make it. So I just had to go back and grind down the outside ring and pour him a special pair. And I got him down to like nine and three quarters inch, so they fit completely inside the footprint of his um, columns. And then I made some, I sunk in some, uh, some sort of like some homemade cage notes so he could bolt them in the columns on the backside so the kids couldn't pry them off and they wouldn't overhang. So they fit completely on his columns. So yeah, I, I don't mind making uh, small stuff or tweaking something I have to fit somebody else's purposes or a custom paint, like say, you know, you have a purple background, you want a purple version of something I have, whatever. I do that stuff all the time, 13. That's no big deal. That's called love and shove. <laughs> He says, I think that for his work as Cornelius, he almost freaking cried. He thought nobody remembered. Wow, really? How do you not remember Cornelius, man, from Planet of the Apes, man? I, I, that was a thing. Not, not so much as an adult, but as a kid. I love Planet of the Apes. That shit used to terrify me, man. Those guys come up riding horses and shit and attacking each other. That was such a crazy movement. And then gangster ass old Charleston Heston. I thought, the, I thought the Tim Burton movies were pretty cool. Uh, like the first two, I think. I, I really like those. I think I have... The first one on DVD somewhere in the cabinet. Yeah, Roddy McDowell, man, he was awesome. I, I just, I don't know, watch Fright Night Tonight, man. That's such a great movie. I, I just love that freaking movie. I love the design of the monsters. Um, I, I love the makeup that they did. That was just such a classic flick, man. I love Fright Night. Dave Argento signed five VHS sleeves and a lobby card for me. So I guess I've done it too. <laughs> God damn. You know, I'll tell you who I don't like. And I don't care about naming names because I don't give a shit who I piss off or what I say. Um, I saw a trans with those haunt teak guys. They go around the country buying up a bunch of like antiques and they drag them in there in a trailer and they start throwing shit on the floor for people to buy. Well, they do like autograph sessions. People. They have like Linnea Quigley and they have other people on. And they literally sit there as they're interviewing with them or talking to them. And they give them like 50 glossies for them people to sit there and sign. And I feel like they're a goddamn indentured servant having to sign their freaking life away. Yeah, it's like, just keep signing, and they're talking, they're talking about the interview, and they just keep handing them shit to sign. It's like, they're, they're not a fucking factory, man. They're a human being. They're, they're signing shit because they need the money because they were in a movie 30 or 40 years ago, and they're like a cult classic, like a beloved, um, a beloved actor from a cult classic that people really cling to. You know, and it's like you're sitting there forcing, almost force-feeding them, you know, glossies, to, so you can sign for, like, you can try and sell for $20, $30 a piece. I, I just hate that. I detest that shit. I just want to go up and punch those guys in the face and whoop their ass right there in front of the whole crowd. I just, I just hate seeing that shit. You know, I, I don't know what their deals are with the, with the actors, if they're really desperate. And they're like, well, yeah, I got you over the barrel here. Sign my 50 fucking glosses that I had put it off of you. You know, I, I just don't, I just don't like that, man. There's something about me that that line I just don't want to cross. Uh, so I'm not really an autograph whore, you know. For certain people, I wouldn't mind asking, or if they volunteered, that'd be different. But for me to go and, and know that a person sitting at a table and, and, and some asshole bought them or paid you know, their airplane ticket to come into town or whatever the deal is, made them sign 50, 80, 200. There's a stack of goddamn pictures of big. They're, they're going to probably get arthritis by the time they get done to the goddamn end of the stack. That just internally you know, uh, makes me like rage, and I just want to smash those people in the face, especially the guy who's on the Haunt Teaks, the Haunt Teaks thing, because I see them do that shit a lot. Uh, they seem to just try and get 50, 80, 100 signatures out of somebody just to hurry up and turn around and flip. They don't want anything like signed to them specifically, you know, hey, this is for my daughter, my son, or to me, you know, I, I love your movies. It's just here, you were in a movie 30 years ago, I think I can whore these pictures out for $25, $30, $40 dollars a piece. So I just hate that shit, it doesn't fly with me. The OG rocks. I love it, man. The remake. Is the remake good, Gene, for Fright Night? I don't want to watch him. I know Colin Farrell's and I don't really have anything against Colin Farrell. I just don't want to take one of my beloved horror flicks and watch it, and it sucks ass. Ray Mitchell. Yeah, there's Ray. Yeah, they're perfect. Awesome, Ray. That's cool. I'm glad they fit your comms. No overhangs. And you'll be able to bolt them in from behind where the kids can't. Or they got to literally tear them off the damn columns to get them off. So that's cool. What's up, Line Cup Thor? What's up, Jamie? Jamie, did you get any more skulls? Did you buy any more? You know, I didn't see how many skulls at Transworld this year. I saw cows for 40 bucks, and then somebody had a pig skull for 200 the, the T3 people. I didn't see much more than that as far as, like, text for me skulls. And then they, had, they did have a small bear skull, 
at the Roadkill Boutique. It was inside a little glass case. It was a small bear, so it had to be a black bear skull. It was definitely a bear skull. John Chambers' makeup uh, got me into makeup. Oh, that's cool. Gene, yeah, I've seen those Carnival Huskers, Hucksters. I, I, I hate those guys, man. I hate that Gene. It pisses me off, you know. It's, it's different with, like, Elvira. She signs autographs for paying 50 bucks. That's a bad bitch. She owns her name. She owns her likeness. She's awesome. She's earned it, you know. Um, but, like, you know, Linnea Quigley or, you know, somebody else, you know, they, they literally put a stack of, like, 50, you know, here, sign. Just keep signing. Just keep signing. They just keep, you know, signing, handing them, force feeding them shit to sign. You know, it's like they don't really care about the person or they're not excited about the work they've done or they're not really, you know, true fans of a certain movie that they've done or a cult clip. They're just there to try and make money off them. I don't know what they're paying them to do that, but they're trying to make a mint off that person. It just disgusts me. I, I hate seeing that shit. So I've, I've never been big into the autograph thing ever. You know they're going to go home. Hey, you know, they're going to put them on eBay. Linnea Quigley's signature. 50 available on eBay. 40 bucks a piece. You know, it's like... I'd rather just burn their store down. Like Elvis' first manager. <laughs> was a useless remake, kind of. Just got to ask why. Yeah, the first movie was so perfect. They should have just left it alone. It's like Goonies. If they try and come back and make Goonies again, I'm going to freaking riot. They're already going to try and remake The Crow for the fourth time using the kid who played it. That kind of pisses me off, you know. Um, they just can't leave well enough alone. You know, I, I just... They won't let that be. They won't stop, you know, smearing his performance for Brandon Lee, you know, and it's like, I, I just, I'm just, it, I, I just want to, like, projectile vomit when I hear that shit, man. Lloyd, did you see clowns at MHC? I did see clowns at MHC, Lloyd. Uh, they're always there. Uh, Ghost Ray had a four-eyed clown that uh, Michael had painted up or something. It was pretty crazy, man. I mean, those eyes that he puts in there are probably four seal eyes. Uh... It, was, it had four eyes. It was nuts looking, man. It was like really realistic. But yeah, there was Quinn had clowns. I guess clowns sell. I don't know. I didn't make any clown shit to take the MHC. So maybe one day, but probably not. <laughs> Although I do want to make a big clown head. That's like a fogger. Uh, a fogger that you can breathe, put a, a fog tube in. And I want to make one for like a carny cart when I make me a creepy carny cart one day. So I've got to make a clown head one of these days, like a big oversized one. It might be like two, three feet tall, something like that. And I'll probably make some extra ones to sell for people who want them for whatever, you know, clown people. Gene says, I did some appliance work on an unreleased film and met Brinky Stevens, seemed trapped, and had a handler, said. Oh, wow. I don't know who Brinky Stevens is, but those handlers, man, you know, it's not so much even the handlers. I get that the handlers, like... Um, you know, it's people who get them to the con, make sure they have all their autographs, their markers, their, their glossies and all that stuff. So I get they got to have a handler. Plus, you want somebody there to jump up and take the knife if some asshole tries to leap over the table. I think mean, I have somebody going to take the, take the knife. Um, like, you know, I've heard, like, uh, Clive Barker's had some crazy people in line. Some guy uh, wanted a book signed by him, but he wanted it signed in blood. So the guy took a knife and opened his own hand and bled all over the book. And then uh, I think uh, Clive Barker... Stamped his handprint down in the blood, then closed the book and gave it to the guy as the cops were dragging him off. So, you know, with Clyde Barker, you don't know what you're going to get. But uh, some of these people, I just feel like it's, it's you know, it's, it's like you just feel like they're an indentured servant. You know, they were in a movie like 30, 40 years ago, and this is how they're making ends meet. And some asshole's going to try and, you know, uh, literally spear them for that and make them sign 300 copies of something so they can turn around and try and max out on them, you know. And it's like, I, I just... I, I don't like that shit, man. It doesn't fly with me. Gene says that was 35 years ago. Wow. Cat says, did anyone glitter me? I know there was a lot of talk about someone doing it. Nobody glitter bombed me, thank God. Uh, I would have probably exploded. I really didn't see any glitter there. It was awesome. It was sort of like an anti-glitter show. It was pretty cool. I mean, some of the girls walking around had glitter on them. Um, but there was no props covered in glitter. I'm sure pretty soon I start doing my dollar store walkthrough and at home, oh, you guys are going to see a shit ton of glitter this year. Uh, China hates us for whatever reason, so they glitter the hell out of everything. At home, they're going to have some glitter. Um, old time potter's going to have some glitter. You know all the Dollar Trees, Dollar Days, Dollar Rama, Dollar Stores, they're all going to have glitter. It's coming. I'm sure it's already on the boats on the way over here. 
weren't ready to be unloaded or some back rooms already just covered in boxes of shit and glitter. What the fuck is a handler anyways? Uh, Gina, you know what a handler is. It's one of them people who like, they make sure they get back and forth to the hotel, they drive them, they make sure they show up to the event, probably because they're under contract with the promoters. And I don't even know how the hell you get that job. It's what if you get somebody stuck with somebody you don't like or somebody you have no idea who the hell, the hell, who the hell they are. Uh, that's a crazy job. I don't, I don't know how you get a job like that. I mean, he said the four-eyed clown. Yeah, the ghost right four-eyed clown. That was pretty trippy, man. Uh, as far as clowns go, that was pretty nuts. And the eyes are really realistic on that thing. So I'm sure it's probably like four seal aisles. Because Michael at Ghost Rider does amazing lifelike props, man. Clown sconces? No, Lloyd. No clown sconces. Not for me. Nope. Maybe from Vic. Vic's like clowns. I'm not much of a fan of clowns. I know a founder was a perv and they don't get a cut. They get a rep. <laughs> glitter glued to glitter. I don't know what the hell they even use to make that stick. Like some of that stuff, it's like they send branches over here to like at home. And like it's literally like in China, there must be like a vat of glue the size of room. And they dip a branch in there and then they dip it in glitter and they roll it around and they stick it on a wooden stick and they say, hey, we'll sell this to Americans for $40. Like why, why would they do that? And then why would an American buy that for $40? You know? I just don't understand the, that whole glitter, glitter process. I don't know what it's for. It's a glorified assistant. Yeah, but I'm sure they're getting some kind of cut of the autographs. You know, it's like, oh, they're the ones who take the twenty dollars when somebody walks up and they say, okay, twenty dollars, have so and so sign this or sign your sock or you know whatever they're gonna sign. That seemed the case. They get along too good. I get the handlers. That I get. You still feel kind of bad when. Uh, that's how somebody makes their living at a, at a convention, just getting signing autographs. You can see they're tired or they don't feel good or, or people are haranguing them and asking them weird, oddball fucking questions that look like they just came out of their mom's basement. That they've been living down there for 47 years. And they haven't showered and their fingernails are long and they're asking weird questions to actors, just totally weirding them out. I just, I just hate that shit. I'll, I'll never be a, I'll never be a, a, a an autograph collector ever. Um, I just don't want to be that guy. And those guys kind of freak me out and make me sick, man. The guys who make me the sick the most are the guys who go to the cons and hire the people to be there and then force them to sign 6,000 things so they can try and dump it on the internet and Etsy and whatever other uh, site. Like the Hauntiques guy. Not a fan. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, so autograph con, you know, comic cons are a freaking blast. And if you've got a book that somebody drew, I don't mind getting a comic book autograph. Like, I think I've got... I think I got Todd McFarland autograph my spawn number one um, years ago. I think I've got a couple other autographs from comic guys. But, you know, uh, some of that stuff, it's like, you know, making feel, people feel uncomfortable or making them feel like they're, they're crawling in their skin. I'm not a fan of doing that. You know, a guy named Gary, he loved glitter. And I think Gary Glitter was also a pervert. I think he's in jail for child molestation, if I remember right. Gene says he likes the old husband and wife teams where they one of them is was the famous and they travel around together. Chura Santana, Mike Nichols. Huh. I didn't know that. But yeah, that's cool. Like if the wife travels with them, you know. Um, I saw like at the one con, the guy who was in the Hills Have Eyes and the Motley Crew video, he had like five family members behind him. So if you fuck with that guy, his family's gonna jump right over that table and fucking beat your ass and probably fucking steal your shoes and bite you. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know. And you guys got me thinking about Fright Night. Now I'm going to have to go kick on some uh, Amazon Prime to look for that. Yeah, it's actually 9.30. I'll be damned. But a team, that's totally different. Because a husband and a wife team, that's cool. Because they know what the other one's limits are. They know what they like or don't like. If a fan's getting pushy, they can say, Hey, man, I can see you're pissing off my husband and my wife. Just move along, guy. we got a long line. You know, just come back another day or something. Or write him a letter or write him an email, you know. So that's cool. Berryman and Sanford. From California, maybe he knew the Bloodshed Brothers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Um, speaking of like old movies like Fright Night and stuff, 
I saw, uh, I think Tony Todd was at that convention, the last one I saw that Lance Henriksen was there. I'm like, oh, Tony Todd, like Candyman. Like, I fucking love Candyman. The first Candyman is awesome. Probably most because I grew up, like, between South Chicago and Gary. So if you draw a line on a map between South Chicago and Gary, the murder capital of the world, that's where I grew up at. So the first Candyman is all about Cabrini Green, where I've also was, I've been in Cabrini Green hanging out before, years ago when I was little. Um, but I saw the remake of Candyman. Uh, where they're like, the, the guy's an artist, and man, that was such a good movie. So well done how they referred back to the first Candyman with Tony Todd. And Tony Todd makes a real short appearance in there. The, the, the remake of, I don't know if it's a remake or reimagination or continuation of the Candyman story. Oh, God damn, it was awesome, man. I, I love that movie. Um, I'm probably going to buy that on DVD to have it. I thought it was so cleverly done, so, so cool. Um, I really like the, the newest Candyman for, I think it was 2021 is when it came out. Um, so I'm always hesitant to go back and watch reboots and shit, but there wasn't a reboot. They picked right up where the Candyman, the whole Candyman kind of lineage was, and they ran with it. And it was really cool. They sort of continue on the Candyman story, and it was freaking awesome. I, I loved Candyman 2021. So if you guys are going to watch a movie, I totally, if you guys like the first Candyman, I think you'll really love this one. I haven't seen some of the later on, like part three and four. Or I've seen them, but I don't remember much out of them. But the first Candyman and the, the 2021 Candyman, you can watch those back to back. They're freaking awesome, man. I, I, I love the first one, Tony Todd. And then the newest one, 2021, I totally recommend go see that new Candyman if you get a chance. Uh, even if you haven't seen the original one in a long time, it's, it's an awesome. It was so well done, man. So cool. I love their play on the first one. Go see the uh, watch. I think Amazon... Amazon Prime has it for free. So the Candyman 2021 is freaking awesome, man. Love it. Michael Berryman, that's right. Uh, Hills Have Eyes, Motley Crue video. And he had like five family members behind him at the um, the last con I saw. I don't know if it was Monster Palooza. It was a Texas one, whatever the hell it was. But uh, that was awesome. Or Monster, not Monster Palooza, but it was one of them damn ones. It was in Texas, though. Michael Berryman, that's him, right. Yeah, because it looks like you fuck with him or come over to the table with him. He's got like five family members that just like chew your fucking arms and legs off, man. That's great. <laughs> the Bloodshed Brothers, man. What scumbags they are. It all comes from the same hat, too. <laughs> Candyman does not get enough credit. Makes care haunt. I love the original, man. Like, I love the original Chucky. Really haven't liked much after that one. Um, yeah, and I've seen some of them. Some of them are funny. You know, part two is okay. But the original one, man, of course, it's filmed in Chicago. Not that I'm, you know, because I grew up 15 minutes from Chicago. It just seems like I'm kind of, you know, like Candyman's sort of a Chicago-based uh, movie. Obviously, Cabrini Green. Uh, the first, Child's Play. You know, I love that movie. Based in Chicago. You know, suburbs of Chicago. So... Maybe it's just like all the Chicago horror movies I like. I, I don't know. <laughs> all right, Mimi. Good night, Mimi. Thanks for hanging out. Let's see, Icy says, off the subject, Keith, would you consider doing a show of how to secure props from theft? Uh, I have such a problem with it. It takes a lot of fun out of it. I see. I've actually got a video plan for that this summer. I'm going to do a video about anti-theft and props and how to protect your props. I'm lucky. Here on my hill... Uh, I usually get about, last year was like probably my best year. We probably had 40, 45 trick-or-treaters, 35, 45 trick-or-treaters. Um, I don't get a lot, but when I grew up in Hanover, we had a ton of trick-or-treaters. Uh, so I definitely want to do a video this summer on uh, anti-prop theft and how to deter it. Although nobody's ever messed with anything in my yard. Um, yeah, I've got some kids that have like thrown rocks or sticks from the, from the street, but nobody's ever stolen anything from me. And I've been here for 20, going on 21 years. This will probably be my 21st Halloween here. But I've definitely got a video planned for that, so look for that this summer. Uh, I've got some ideas. I've got some stuff that I use I want to show you guys. So that's one of my videos I've got planned for this year before uh, Halloween shows up. Makes Care Haunt says, I did buy the new one. My daughter, who was eight, went and saw the new one at the drive-ins. It does a lot more explaining than the new one that links and all the, the new one that uh, links all the others. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to see the behind the, the scenes on that stuff. I may just order that off of Amazon. Um, and see what all the behind the scenes stuff and how far back they go into it because uh, the first this one goes back to all of the Goes back through the other uh, candy mans uh, that the first one showed and they did like this little thing like with the 
this black and white like paper cutouts almost like a south park type of thing that's really freaking cool man um i really love that part of the movie when they were referring back to the other candy mans and going back to candy man history that part of the movie is freaking awesome like with almost like the little cutout paper puppets and stuff that's badass man makes care says me uh my eight-year-old and i love seeing horror movies at the drive-in she's my mini me and loves helping with my haunt you know drive-ins are such a cool I, so I grew up in, I was born in 73, I grew up going to the drive-in. Like nine kids piled into a station wagon, you wear your pajamas there, you put blankets in the back, you lay down. You got a movie going on behind you, and a movie going on in front of you. Um, we grew up going to the drive-ins, you know, uh, you pop up your popcorn at home, you put it in a brown paper bag from the grocery store, so by the time you get there, you got this much popcorn in a, in a bag. Because um, you're too poor to go to the concession stand and get pop and snacks for freaking four kids, five kids in the back of a station wagon. I love the drive-in. Uh, they kind of phased out here like in the 90s. They are gone. Now since COVID happened, they've opened up one of the older ones and tried to redo it in, uh, what's it called? Something like something 49. I haven't been to it, but I heard it's kind of cool. So I might try and do that this summer if it's still open. I'm going to ask my buddy if it's still around, if they haven't closed yet. But because of COVID, that's like a perfect idea. So everybody goes in their own car. You put a big screen in a cornfield somewhere, mow it down. And with the Bluetooth technology... I don't know why you couldn't. I don't know why drive-ins couldn't have a resurgence. You know, uh, I think it'd be freaking awesome. I'd love to see that. I'd love to go again. Mine's long gone. They tore it down. It's a truck stop now. It had like leaking barrels and drums and stuff on it. So, um, but driving experience, you know, for people of my, you know, Gen Xers or or, or older or you know, uh, baby boomers, love the driving, man. Such a great experience. So many good times. I think I saw cat people at the drive-in. I saw scanners at the drive-in. Um, what else I seen later on in the 90s? I saw the Freddy movies of the drive in I saw Jurassic Park. I saw Dragon the Bruce Lee story with a double feature. Because uh, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan with Jurassic Park in the drive in. Um, I saw, I think, did I say Freddy's Dead Part 4? I think I saw at the drive in. Uh, I've seen a bunch of movies at the drive in. Can't remember all of them. I think, no, not The Prophecy. I don't think I saw that. But Cat People, most definitely. Bunch of movies I've seen at the drive-in. So the drive-in experience, that's the thing that's kind of died off, but I really wish it would make a resurgence with COVID because the drive-in's a blast, man. It, you know, if you, were, if you were alive in the 70s, you went to the drive-in, it's such a cool experience, man. I wish more people would do it or would open them, you know? No problem, I see. No problem. Candyman is overlooked. It's my top three horror movies. I love the original, man. I love Fright Night. I love Monster Squad. Um... Damn, I love Pumpkinhead. Uh, that's another one that's... I love Near Dark with Lance Henriksen and Bill Pax. I think it's one of the, like, the greatest vampire movies of all time. Um, man, there were some killer horror movies in the 80s. And I hate that they try and make part 47 of them and fuck up the originals. Or, you know, they try and change them, whatever, you know. So, uh, some of those, like The Hills Have Eyes, the original. Um, I think one of like, the really smartest like movies, uh, horror movies I've seen lately, other than Candyman, is Wrong Turn, the first one. That was really great, like in this decade. I think that's going to be a really good one that ages well down the road. Uh, another one of my favorite ones. Oh, yeah, Gene, for sure, man. All the horror, the, the driving and the horror movies, like hand in hand, man. All the teenagers had drive-ins in their speakers in their rooms. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. Domino, what are you doing? We had three within 20 miles of my home. Oh, that's awesome. We had one. We had Outdoor 41. Uh, that was our big drive-in. When I was a kid, we had one in Merrillville, which is like, yeah, 35, 40 minutes away. But that was the only other one. We used to go to that one, me and my buddy and uh, girlfriends and stuff. We'd go sit there, and it was like a shitty Geo Tracker. Or uh, what else did he have? I didn't even have a, I didn't even have a shitty Geo. I didn't even have a car. So I, didn't even, I had to admire his shitty Geo Tracker. So we'd go there on that. And then something else. I think he had a... A Shibet or something like that. So we would go to the drive-in and sit in that and get our snacks and or go to dinner first and then go see a double feature. Those old metal speakers were like 15 pounds. You put them in your car and you roll the window up on them. Yeah, man. Then you turn the little turn tune the little knob in. By the time you went to the other one, you had to turn your radio on and tune it to a certain station number uh, in the 90s. So they had that going for them. Right near me, we have two. Uh, but in the fall, they play old class movies. You know, I make scare haunts. That's to be the best thing. I would love to go to, like, a drive-in movie theater and see like uh, Halloween 
or see Friday the 13th, or see the first Freddy or the first Hellraiser, and see it in a drive-in theater, man, that would be freaking awesome. I think, uh, not so much horror-related, but I think Stephen King said, or not Stephen King, uh, oh, God damn it, uh, what's his face? Beard. Steven Spielberg said he would pay a million dollars to see his top ten favorite movies over again in the movie theater for the first time again. I thought, that's pretty badass. If I had, if I was a millionaire like him, that'd be money well spent to see your top favorite ten movies, have them erase from your memory, and see them in the theater again. That would be freaking awesome, man. Vamp, Beard Dart. Yeah, the radio thing worked. That's right, yeah, we had to tune our... In the 90s, we had to use the radio station and tune into their radio station when we were going in. So we would bring a jam box and put it in the back seat so we had, like, surround sound in the car. <laughs> it's bad. We'd have to get new batteries before we went to, like, the big D bastards. She spent, like, $9 on goddamn batteries to make sure you could hear it behind you. <laughs> but Near Dark, I love Near Dark. That's one of my favorite vampire movies. Um, so well done. Um, I, you know, great take on vampires. Uh, I, I just love that movie, man. It's, it's another great ass vampire movie, like one of the, one of my all time favorite vampire movies, other than uh, Fright Night. All right, looks like am I caught up on comments? Yes, I sure am. Well, goddamn guys, it's nine thirty nine. I've been blabbing away here for damn near three hours, so I think I'm gonna jump off, shut down. Uh, like I said, I'm working on uh, new stuff. Once I get recovered from MHC. We're going to bounce back into some videos, do some DIYs. i got shopping videos coming. I've already kind of taken a look out there, made a few stops uh, to see who's going to have what, if anybody had anything yet already. So shopping videos are coming. We're going to DIYs. I'm going to do the anti-theft video for props. I've got this one. I want to try and do um, Blacklight Fog. i got a bunch of shit in mind that I want to do. Um, and then we're going to hit it, man. So hopefully it's going to be a busy summer. And then we'll haul ass all the way to haunt season. And I can start making some more stuff for M8C next year. So, let me say goodbye to everybody. Near Dark, amen, Gene. Near Dark, I used to watch it when it was on cable as a kid. Like, come on, like, HBO, like, three times in the weekend. And I'd watch it two out of those three times. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, everybody, for showing up and hanging out. Just wanted to touch base with you guys after M8C. Now that the madness is over, I've got new stuff coming. I've got a bunch of stuff planned. And then, man, you guys are doing projects, man. Post them on Cowboys and Candlesticks on Facebook and show me what you guys are building. Um, I love feeding off of you guys, too, man. It's awesome. Uh, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I'm not dead. I just wanted to show you guys. I haven't been on for a minute, but like I said, with MHC, man, it's just been a grind, man. So I'm looking forward to kind of getting back in the video making and doing some stuff and doing some shopping videos and showing you guys what's out there and then building some stuff for MHC and catch up with everybody and just having a freaking blast all summer long, all the way through haunt season, man. So... I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Good night, IC. Good night, Berlina. Good night, Bluff. Good night, Gene. Good night, Lloyd. Just killed my eye. <laughs> Remember to hit the like button before you leave. If you guys want to, go ahead. If not, I don't blame you. I never ask that. I never, I'm never like, I always hate the guys like, yeah, smash that like button and send prescribe. And all my little, my little like and prescribe pillow is in the background. I hate seeing that stupid shit. You guys are grown ass people. You can leave me a thumbs down. If I suck, just leave me a comment saying I'm going to punch you in the face. Comments are stupid. Totally cool with that. I get it. Good night, Ray. Dave, I'm sure you probably fell asleep on the computer. Vic probably fell asleep on the computer, so I'll, I'll message you guys later, man. All right, guys, I'm going to call it quits for tonight. I appreciate everybody stopping by. Yeah, man, looking forward to seeing the videos on Texas Horrors Convention. I got a bunch of videos planned. We're going to jump on videos pretty soon, but yeah, man, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys uh, and doing some stuff, making some videos together. So I will see you guys soon. Until then, you guys have a good night, man. I appreciate you guys stopping by, so I'll talk to you all soon. Let me kill this camera. Oh, I got a rotate device. All right. And this one. No filters, no filters. All right, right there. Okay.